Ah, oh, oh, hello. Let's get that going. Ah, oh, what ho, and welcome to another exciting installment of um, uh, Jack's off on a plane with. Yes, and uh, you'll you'll find us eventually um, sitting sitting on a, a commercial airliner. Uh, and it's lovely to have all all you people with us today. Uh, lovely to see you there. Um, yes, uh, Jean Below, welcome. Plankton, welcome. We see you travelling with us today. In curtains, uh, good to have you with us. And uh, yes, let's just let's just get this started. Now, what, one of the one of the joys, one of the joys of flying um, on on a commercial airliner is uh, you never know what interesting and lovely person is going to be sitting next to you for the duration. Let me tell you, um, some of the some of the best conversations I've ever had have been with 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 practical strangers uh, on on commercial air flights. And uh, well. What? Okay. Um, and it, I do wonder uh, who I will, uh, yeah, who, who I'll be sitting next to uh, on on the flight today. Who could it be? Why? It's it's Shimin Salmon. Ah, oh, Shimin Salmon. Now, uh, ooh, what can we say about she's she's a a, 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 a quizzer. She's a buffeter. She's um, she's a theaterer as well. She's not a theater. That, that would be outlandish. No. Um, and also, um, a long-time bad film companion for, for yours truly here. So, uh, Shaleen, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Hello, I'm good. How are you? Uh, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. We, we, got, we had some slight slip-ups there at the start of the show uh, with uh, falling balls, but I think I think we rode it well. I think, I'm sure if we don't mention it, uh, people probably just yeah, forget about it altogether. Yeah, it's fun. Exactly, exactly. That last minute run to the gate, I uh, could have done without that. <laughs> Amongst the falling balls, yeah. Exactly, exactly. Well, it's, it's a dripping hazard, dripping hazard. Do you hello, know that... ladies and gentlemen. Hello? At this time, the forward entry door is Do you know that 80% of accidents in airports, in airports happen because of uh, lost, lost, lost wooden balls? Portable electronic devices must be set to airplane mode. Make sure your seat backs and tray tables are in their full upright and locked position and that your seat okay. belt is correctly fastened. Oh, Should you have any difficulties with this, a, please ring when was, the, when was the last time you flew anywhere, Shinny? And we'll guide you oh, through yeah. the process. <laughs> I went to Glasgow to fly. If you've not yet done so, please stow uh, your carry on luggage underneath the I seat in front of you or in the overhead bin. Take care not to force any no. item into a space that is too <laughs> small uh, for uh, it. So let then yeah. please take your seat and fasten um, your seat belt. And you have to go by EasyJet though, which is not as nice if as If you were seated in an emergency uh, exit row, bring your own sweets. You safety information card located in your seat back pocket. If you do not wish, are unable, or unwilling to perform the functions described in the event of an emergency, a flight time. attendant will receive a delayed flight by something like two hours and like it felt like we remind you that this is like a non-smoking flight smoking is prohibited on the entire aircraft including I'm the lavatories just the volumes here or destroying the lavatory smoke detectors is prohibited That's better. by law uh, please note that each of the yeah, that was the last, to the last time i flew anywhere and i had to get like, it was like a 5 a.m flight or something no 7 a.m flight i had to get to the airport for 5 a.m coming back which is yeah. not i'm not a morning person no even no. getting on a plane is and it was like weirdly because it was still covid -y. I mean, we are still in covid times but this was felt very covid -y times yeah like just nothing was open so like yeah, yeah. there's no lounge at well, the time i was Ladies flying there was no lounges which is the, the best bit about going anywhere is the airport lounge the features yes yeah it's 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 always a and this is, I guess, we're sort of slightly spoiled because I think I think each country has its own sort of airport culture to some extent, and you do go to some sort of small like Malta. I seem to remember Malta. There's like nothing. There's nothing in the airport at Malta. I mean, there might be now. This was travelling a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, when we went to Florence, it was a very depressing <laughs> airport. I don't. Yeah. If it did have a lounge, I I didn't do my research, but um, yeah, I always now book a lounge. The ones the ones that just let anyone in. Yeah, because yeah. they are like a buffet. Exactly. Um, yes. They, particularly the drinks, the best ones are, and I'm not sure if these have come back post COVID, but the ones where you can serve your own alcohol. Hello. Yeah. yeah. And my my highlight was I can't remember. I think it was when we were going to Florence. There was a lady who, um, she poured out like basically a high highball glass, basically full of whiskey. Hell. And then, like, just added a dash of coke, and that was her drink in preparation yeah. Yeah. for wherever she was I've, going. Maybe she just never mixed a whiskey and coke before, and thought that's 
Those Ray seem. They're, they're, seem not to right. make a lot of they're not right. They're not right. Yeah. I'm right. with her. More whiskey. Um, but yeah, those are the best ones. But I'm not sure again post COVID if, if those are coming back, which is a shame because they were like. I think we, to be fair, we did nearly miss a flight after being on those months yeah, because yeah. this is when my partner was still drinking. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, we were just like, oh, we'll just stay here and have another red wine and then realised that we weren't as close to the gate as we thought, as we, thought we were. Yeah, yeah. You never know at the airport, unless unless you're a regular flyer, you never know yeah. which gate you're going to be and how... So now I've, I've got better as a flyer and I sort of books, like, I end the airport lounge time about half an hour yeah. before the yeah. flight. So I'm like, right, this is over. I'll just slowly walk to yeah. wherever my, I need to be. My, my must-be-early for everything anxiety just, just flies through the roof, really. <laughs> It's, it's, it's balancing the must be early for everything and getting as much alcohol and cheese and crackers as possible yeah, that I struggle yeah, with. Like, yeah. I, how can I do both? Very, this very, the, yeah. So, yeah, you end up in the airport, if you're me, for a very long time because you want the full three hours of airport lounge. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the food isn't even, like, the hot food, to be honest, is not that great. It's just that you just kind of go in and go, right, for 30 odd quid, I'm just going to smash all of this. And then hopefully get on a flight and remain soberish enough that they let me on. Yeah, yeah. I um. What's the weirdest thing you've? No. What's the weirdest thing you've ever eaten in an airport? Weirdest thing. This is uh. Yeah. No, I see. I'm not that experimental in an airport. The, the odd, not the oddest drink, but the drink that I forget I don't like, but I always have it in airports. Is gin and bitter lemon. Okay. Like at least two or three times I've, I've gone going like, oh, there's free bitter lemon, there's gin. I'm going to drink that. And then I have it and then I realise I don't actually Ooh. like it very much. Yeah. I also, that classic thing of I only have Bloody Marys um, in an airport lounge. I never have it on the flight. Yeah. But I always, again, because you can kind of make your own. And it feels like a novelty to be like, here's all the cocktail ingredients yeah. you need. Yeah. Go ahead. And I'm like, I'm not really sure what a Bloody Mary is meant to taste like. So I have no idea if I'm making them to the standard yeah, I, that they're I've, meant to be. I'm trying to remember if I ever had one. I must have had one. Yes, I'm sure I had one before before I before, before I kicked, times. Before I kicked <laughs> the whole thing. Um, and I think it's basically V eight with a kick. I think that's basically what yeah, it's supposed to taste exactly. like. It's basically tomato juice and Worcester sauce. That's the yeah. main taste yeah. sensation. And then someone's put vodka in it. Um, I, think I've, I think I've had a yeah. Virgin Mary. Pretty Virgin sure Mary's, I've had a Virgin yeah. Mary. I, again, like, I had one in a theatre recently and it was not, it was too spicy, I think. And I was like, oh, if this is how it's meant to be, then I've definitely yeah. not been making yeah. it how they should be. Underspiced. Um, I th- think, what was I going to say? Speaking of gin. Yeah. <laughs> speaking of gin, wasn't that your specialist subject when you appeared on BBC's it was, Mastermind? Yeah, the, the time before I went to Glasgow, I went to Belfast by a plane uh, to film uh, the current series of Mastermind. My episode was on, goodness me, three weeks ago now? Three, three weeks. weeks I'm not sure. Yes. 17th of January. It's still on iPlayer if anyone wants to and hasn't seen it. Absolutely. Um, and um, I, th- I think, uh, um, we're not going to spoil it, but you definitely you definitely won uh, Twitter Mastermind. I won, I think, yeah, I won over night. Twitter, which is the hardest competition of all, yeah. I think we can agree. See, Millstone Bart um, watched it. But yeah, if, I would recommend it. There's, they're looking for applicants at the moment. If there's lots of people kind of ooing and ahhing about it, um, yeah. I would say just go for it. Because they, they awkwardly ask for five subjects. If you're the sort of person who's gone in going, there's absolutely. I went in wanting to do something inspired by our Friday Night Flops mm. thing. I wanted to do the Razzies. Yes, yeah. Um, and I had this whole list of things I wanted to do. So I wanted to do Razzies and ended up basically, you, you have five. If you're lucky enough to get an audition, you discuss your five and you say, this is why I like the subject or why I want to do it, blah, blah, blah. So I explained why I kind of wanted to do it, not really putting anything in order. And then they came back to me with the final three and the Razzies were nowhere to be seen. So, um, yeah, I mean, if someone else wants to take it, try again, try and get Razzies on, because I think it is a it is a good, a bit listy, but it would be a good subject to do. I was disappointed they didn't let me have it, but I ended up getting gin instead, which was, I don't think I'd have won over Twitter as much with the Razzies. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, Jin. I think Jin struck a chord with a lot of viewers. I suspect it struck yeah. a chord with Millstone. 
I, uh, yeah, I think there was, I don't know, I was kind of, the nature of gin is like, you feel like, oh, this is quite a trashy but subject, only, but actually, uh, two ahead of the us nature the of gin right is just that it's been everywhere. I get, and it's... It ends it, up being this weird historical document. Definitely, yeah. You've got the, the um, last, I don't know. You've got the sort of Hogarth uh, Yes, and you've got the links and... to William the Third and William of Orange and people drinking gin, not possibly because they liked it, but because if they wanted to win favour with the king, yeah. they had to be seen to be enjoying this Dutch drink. So, yeah, yeah. yeah it's um, it's still, there's some really, yeah, really good books on kind of the history of alcohol. So you've got the initial, like, how they developed alcohol and then actually how it becomes this big cultural milestone. Yeah, and, and a sort um, of a cult cultural war, really, in, in the UK, which is where they sort of the Hogarth... Um, yes, yes. It's, this it's, idea it's, that, yeah, it's, gin is, it is going to Beer lane people. and gin lane, yeah. Yeah. Um, the irony, of course, is that I'm drinking a beer now rather than gin. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, like a murder um, beer. Like a murder one. Hang on. I, what, can we order yet? <laughs> I uh, feel like I've just brought my non fire oh, about. Yeah, we can't, we can't order yet. <laughs> That's annoying. Uh, but yeah, we're, get, we're going to Nova Scotia. Um, viewers, uh, what are you, what are you, what are you, what are you going to be doing in Nova Scotia? Actually? <laughs> Genuinely, our old flatmate um, Matt, mm -hmm. he lives in Nova Scotia. But there you are, just seeing an so old that's, friend. That's what I'm. We go. We're going to visit him. Fabulous. I'm going Fabulous. to visit him. Yeah, he lives. Um, he used to live in Halifax, which is where this plane is going. But he now lives in a town, I think, slightly further north called Sydney. Okay. Yeah. I don't know beyond much beyond that. We're currently discussing going with my partner, and uh, yeah, he's he's not the biggest fan of planes, so we'd have to do kind of the initial long ride to the yeah. US, and then getting out. So I imagine From, this is the route. If we ever go, it's the route be, we would. That's, that's going to be fascinating. If yeah, if you end up doing JFK to uh, Halifax, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll record it and send it to you. Definitely, definitely. The, definitely. The footage. Uh, we've, we've got a couple of a couple of questions in from uh, from chat here that are gin related. Uh, the first one is: uh, Is it true that gin is made out of industrial floor cleaning chemicals? Is that, oh. is that, true? Is that true? I hope not. I it's, hope it not. is general. I mean, I, my assumption is it's just vodka with some juniper in. That's really if you want to really bring yeah, it down. That's the basic. to basics. It, gin is flavored vodka, really. Yeah. There has been some attempts. I can't think of any examples, but there have been places that, or companies that have released juniper flavored vodka um, yeah. as part of the that whole flavor. That is vodka not gin. Yeah, thing. yeah. But yeah. it's not gin somehow. I think there's there's very strict rules in what, in what makes gin. It yeah. does. Some gins do taste like industrial floor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I suspect that might be what what is driving. That is, that is. Yeah, you've not been having good gin. That's yeah. my advice. It's weird. I think. Um, because I, I ginned around a little bit before I, before I stopped drinking, and I, I think it's it is quite surprising at how 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 uh, much of a variety of flavour there is out there, really. Yeah, and how much different? I mean, ultimately, it's about decent tonic, really. Yes. I mean, yeah. very few people, including myself, you're not really having gin neat. But um, there's some really interesting ones called look, I can't remember. It's like oh, it begins with O. Uh, but it's like really heavily spiced. Like it feels like if you'd have it probably like a ginger ale, but it's very kind of strong Indian flavours. Oh right, nice. Which doesn't really feel it doesn't really feel like anything, to be honest, let alone yeah. gin. And then you've got kind of the flavoured gins like I had a really nice um orange, blood orange beef eater one. But there's also a fine line where you go, actually is the juniper still there with those fruit flavoured yeah. ones? Yeah. And does it really it still go with like a yeah. yeah, exactly. Is it just yeah, again, are you just in flavoured vodka territory? Yeah. Ultimately. So um yeah, I'm not I don't have like my have a friend who has like this insane gin collection and there's just so many. Like she she had a peach one once, which was lovely. But I just don't have the space to have all the potential gins that you can have. I went to a pub yesterday that had an incredible gin menu for quite a smallish pub. And I was like, how many people are actually going out and ordering like a lemon gin and tonic? Yeah, yeah. Like, unless it, you've got a decent cocktail menu, and that's part yeah. of that. Because I don't actually don't, most people want. Yeah. I think they're sort of pushing for that kind of craft ale culture, aren't they? Where where people yeah, just need to try everything. 
to yes to... and feel yeah exactly whereas same with my relationship with with beers like i enjoy them and i drink them but i'm not desperate to tick yeah. off yeah. a list of of drinks it's more i like the look of that one that percentage yeah. where it's got a, me it's got a pretty there. label yes <laughs> that's that that it yeah yeah oh um, oh no no i hope that baby pipes down <laughs> it's quite a rough takeoff though it is kind of wonder i'd be crying yeah uh. Um, the, oh, the, the boy asks, uh, when does gin go off? I have an inch left in a bottle bought last summer, and I now dead touch it. Oh, no, you're right. Just down in one. Yeah. And Kurt suggests that it goes off immediately after distillation. Again. <laughs> dissing, dissing I feel the like gin. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of anti-gin people in the chat. Feels that way. Feels that way. Whoa. Oh, we're off. I'm always amazed by this bit of the game, because it just... Even though it's quite choppy graphics, really, just it just places you there completely. It does a little building, and the, yeah, and the, I like the fact we're above the wing, which is where I always seem to end up when I come on the play. Like I never get the nice, clear views. I'm always right next to the wing, so I never get any nice pictures or anything. Yeah, yeah. This you can see the wing, which is nice. You see the the uh, uh, you know you're flying. Airy rods. Yeah, exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Oh. So um, you, now, um, I I get the feeling that with Mastermind, um, you get your your general, uh, you, you get your general members of the public, alongside your hardened quizzes. Yes, and, absolutely. Um, yeah, and I think that's that's quite. Interesting. You said to me something the other day about uh, is it the Anton Deck? Um, oh, um, limitless, limitless, limitless. Win. Yeah, where well, you have a theory that uh, that they sort of you they, basically. I, yeah. So I don't know if, if anyone in the chat has has applied for game shows. It's always a very awkward question, which for most people they'd be like, "What the hell are you talking about?" It asks if you're in a quizzing league. And I was doing TV game shows. I did my first one back in 2007. So I was doing them long before I, I joined the league, which I only joined in 2020. And I was like, I don't know what that is. I don't, you know, now I'm, I'm always quite honest because it's quite, you can find my details on Quiz League websites, like how I'm doing, yeah, what's so going on. No, yeah. But yeah, you, they asked that question. I, I didn't see the application for Limitless Win. I don't know if they did. But if, even if they didn't, there is a big difference, particularly if you're just asking general knowledge. You can tell the person that does a lot of quizzing, whether yeah. it's league quizzing, whether it's they just go to their pub quiz a yeah. lot. And then you can tell the people who probably aren't great at it, but they've heard there's some easy money to be won and they'll go and do the audition. Yeah. So yeah. Limitless one's quite interesting because I think they were, I didn't see anyone from the quizzing community. Yeah. And we're, we're big enough that we can kind of infiltrate yeah, it's, it's um, on, um, game shows. I feel like I've acquired friends who are who all know each other already from quizzing and it's like what <laughs> it's 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 like this secret yeah. society almost of it's got wider since basically what happened prior to the to lockdown and covid you would be within your kind of local league and there aren't a ton of local leagues but the sort of the biggest one among the longest running ones was the quiz league of london um what then happened was those couldn't go to the pubs anymore those leagues so yeah. They initially just transferred themselves online and Zoom quizzing became, yeah. and the format works really well on Zoom, to the extent that a separate league formed by, um, I hope, hopefully, although I'll plug this, but there's a man called John Stitcher who was with, I think, Merseyside or Wirral? I think it's Wirral Quiz League. Um, he formed the online quiz league and the purpose of that is to just purely be online and as a result, that has exploded. Oh, right. yeah. Because that means you can be anywhere in the world and you can just go online and do it. I think it's every it's every Wednesday at eight. If anyone is interested in, in quizzing, and just Google online quiz league um, and inquire about joining. But that was my first foray. It was purely online for the good year, really. Um, and as a result, yeah, because it's quite it's weird. Like I said, it's quite small. So I got into it through my friend, our mutual friend Oliver. Um, he married Paul Sinha um, in December yes. twenty nineteen. Yes. We weren't invited uh, to the wedding. Yes, from Paul Sinha from The Chase. 
and at this wedding was my friend Amy, who I knew from a completely different internet forum from years ago, and um, Beth Webster, who's one of the eggheads. Mm-hmm. And I got into a very brief chat with them about kind of the lack of women in this format. And in December 2019, I signed up. And then obviously in March 2020, everything happened. And I didn't really hear anything from it until the summer. Um, and that's how I got into it. But yeah, you you come across people and I've become this like joke that I know everyone because I seem to have links with immediately the quizzes. And then there's other people who are kind of just outside of quiz who seem to know people in quiz. And they're like, yeah. oh, you know Shanine as well. It's like, yeah, yeah, I just know everybody. So, yeah. Um, so it's but yeah. One of the things no. that I love about Facebook is that is that when you you click on a friend and you look at the mutual friends and often it, it will be like well we all move in these similar circles so it's yeah. understandable but then there'll be one person it's like how on earth do you know them yeah exactly and you're like what's the story there because yeah. you feel like did you just meet at a party or did you work yeah, together yeah. or yeah there's been quite a few like on twitter there's someone who i know from complaining about um the national theater production of macbeth with Rory yeah. Kinnear, which is one of the worst, worst productions of Macbeth, yeah. but one of the worst productions of the national. That's, that's the one. That's the one that famously he gets away with it, isn't it? That yeah. One. yeah, terrible idea. Terrible Win idea. Scotland. Yeah. yeah. Um, all I remember about the production it was bad, and there was lots of bin bags to symbolise something, and I, I didn't uh, know what. So this was my my primary hobby um, before quizzing, which was I was reviewing theatre and I was going to theatre a lot and yeah that again lockdown kind of put a yeah. stop to that um but I met someone who was also in the audience of this preview and I was just slagging it off on Twitter and he was like no this is terrible I agree yeah. so he became a friend um and then when I got into quizzing he knew someone else in quizzing and I'm like I'm still not quite sure how the two of them I don't know if it's through work or life or whatever but yeah I end up kind of tagging them both and stuff because I'm like, well, well you two know each other. And I've yeah. tried to get this theatre person into quizzing and failed terribly. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm very good at selling quizzing to people because I think people just go, I've got enough going on and I'm insecure about various other things in my life. I do not need a weekly or more often quiz yeah. to remind me. But it is, um, it is, it's getting kind of harder to find the time for it, I think, in real life. Like real life quizzing's come back now, which is really good. Yeah. But, like, I can understand people wanting to do so much now that things have eased that you just, you don't. Do you want to spend two hours doing some dry quiz about, you know, civilizations or whatever they're going to ask you about? Because that's the the thing that I find interesting but also infuriating. There isn't, like, a syllabus. There isn't, like, just, like, a handbook that says we're going to ask you questions on this. It's just whatever the person writing it fancies. Yeah. And hopefully you know it and that's that's like how you get through quiz hopefully you know it and then sometimes you do and sometimes you don't yeah and it's um i mean we've we've spoken before about um essentially that there's a there's a leaning hang on (laughs) i'm I'm out of sync oh i think there's, there's there's trouble at the mill um and I think, yeah, we've sort of spoken before about how, how there is a, a sort of a leaning towards kind of uh, a white middle class uh, male sort of yes. question uh, to- topics, you know. Very much so. And that's, I'm trying. So I've been doing a lot more. I mean, I've only been it like, yeah, uh, not even two years, actually. It'll be two years in the summer. But very early on, I kind of picked up that there's things that you know just because they've been you've been quizzing for years and it comes up all the time and that's fine that's how learning works you just do yeah, the same absolutely. thing over yeah. and over again but there's also things that i think they kind of deep dive on i remember doing a history quiz in something and it was just obsessed with battles and treaties it's like that's not yeah that's not the sole that's not thing all of history. history like yeah history can be everything but it, it's it can be battles and treaties that's fine but I don't have like 90 percent of the questions yeah. about them um Where's your, where's your Chartist to... reform? Yeah, you know? exactly. Where, where's your, where's your industrialisation? All of that. Yeah, there's, there's so much, so much. But instead, yeah, this weird quiz concentrate on those things. Um, I don't think there's a barrier to learning, especially if you're serious about quizzing. Like everyone will try and attempt to learn everything, and I think, I think that's a bold approach because if you're just not interested in it, yeah, you're not, you're not gonna want to yeah. learn everything um 
so I've kind of been starting writing more. So my knowledge area is more pop culture, I would say. So your film, your music, your television, lifestyle to a degree, if you're going to yeah. include like celebrity gossip and things like yes, that. Yes, which, which I understand uh, you are. Yeah. yeah. Um, but also, you know, how many answer lines, if you look at quizzes even from about a decade ago, how many answer lines are women? How many answer lines are people of colour? How many times are questions about people of colour yeah. um, getting missed and seen as hard when actually it's like culturally for some people that's not a problem yeah so the example um i have a friend who grew up kind of primarily in kind of like a um like a south south asian household so i think her, her father was like from uganda and her mother was from india but she was saying for her straightforward level ones or level ones are kind of the easiest question level four upwards is, is hardest that's kind of the scale yeah. we use so level one's about beatles and david bowie for example like that wasn't played in our household no. whereas if we asked about kind of indian musicians that would automatically be seen as hard and it's like yeah it's hard for yeah. the white men in the room yeah, absolutely yeah it's Bo not hard for those of indian descent who grew up i was gonna say that. yeah sort of questions about bollywood that uh, yeah exactly think, yeah. or immediately is seen as like level four and it's like well they're not at all like for some people they might be hard for so i want to see more people coming in and saying i can tell you the difference between an easy bollywood question and a hard bollywood question yeah yeah. Um, or, you know, in my case, come in and say, look, yes, that's an easy television question. Actually, if you want to challenge people a bit more, it's a hard television question. And yeah. There's always going to be topics you'd, like people are not great at or just don't enjoy. Like my biggest barriers are still science and geography, sport to a degree, um, just because they're things I've not grown up and absorbed. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And it, that's what it's ultimately about. And you've got ultimately said it's, it's very white. It's very western mm. um and it's very middle class on the assumption that people grew up for example reading lots of books yeah yeah and actually a lot of people didn't grow up reading lots of books so they grew up just watching television or the, listening to the radio the, or... the thought of the first time that i noticed that as a poss possible bias because i'm not exactly the, the best person <laughs> as, a, as a white male to sort of make those judgments but it was um it was a quiz show where the uh the the people who sort of won the main quiz were it was a, a couple of uh, women of colour and they had a, various subjects to pick from and they went with children's literature and the um, and then they had like a question which was like naming um, uh, Tintin adventures and I was, I was kind yeah, of watching it and I was just thinking well I can and again this is as much my bias as theirs perhaps but I, I could imagine a, a copy of you know, I could imagine Tintin books in a, in a in a white household far more readily than than a black household. Yeah, which is yeah, not I mean, obviously to say that that, no, that they wouldn't be there. Don't or, wouldn't or shouldn't be, be but, but it's yeah. You have kind of like culturally. I mean, I grew up in a household, so so um, my mum's black, and we didn't really. You know, people have that conversation about when they found out Father Christmas wasn't real. Yeah. What? I don't think I ever knew he was because my mum was a black single parent. She wasn't going to let some old white man take credit for her hard work. <laughs> yes, so it just yeah, wasn't yeah. a concept in our house of giving credit to this old white man. Yeah. And I think that probably shapes a lot of my thinking now, yeah, which is I'm not yeah. giving credit to old white men. But you're right. There was a question in the Quiz League of London that did that come to me? Or was it? it came to my team, and it was about the um, the Chronicles of Narnia yeah and level you know easy lying the witch in the wardrobe that's kind of i'd say standard in most people's minds yeah asking about the other six you might get people saying um prince caspian because of the film yeah <laughs> yeah that's the, that's the only other one that that's i could the only other yeah one yeah like, my brain was going is it prince casper something like that <laughs> something like that but like that isn't like a standard fair but i imagine in some households they had the seven books in their house and they read them all the time and that's easy to them um and that's fine but yeah it's children's literature even like asking what color certain mr men are feels yeah. like on the surface quite a straightforward question but if you didn't read them or had them read to you and you've not read them for the last like 20 30 odd years yeah it becomes yeah. quite difficult so there isn't 
I think there's very few universal easy questions and I don't even like implying that there is anything that's easy because kind of it depends on where you're from it depends on your culture it depends on what you focus on your just general learning and yeah I don't really know you know it's it's like what color is the sky is about the only color universal thing that maybe you could ask someone that you could be like okay at least 90 percent will get um but yeah, it is, I, I find writing, I find it really enjoyable. So my main purpose for writing is not completely altruistic. It is, I need to learn things for quiz and I find it easier if I write things down. Yeah. So writing questions that may or may not come up, you know, yeah. that's it's... kind of a good way of learning. And it has, it helped me. I did a quiz yesterday morning and I think there was about two questions at least that yeah. I knew purely because I've written about them. And I was sat on the same table and I swapped my paper with um, a lovely man called Ian who is quite sure how old he is I want to say 72 he looks amazing he's in in much better name than me we have different knowledge levels but we always really get along and that's why we kind of complement each other if we're on we were on a team last summer and really worked well together and he didn't know who wrote Annie Allen which was the first sorry poet tree collection to be won by an African-American author. Uh, And I didn't know all the various arts and culture things that he knew. So, (laughs) but there was a woman called Gwendolyn Brooks, but again, that has only come up because I've gone, oh, this should be known as a question. Um, And the the standard that kind of become chestnuts in a sense, chestnuts is the term that quizzes used to say, this just comes up all the time, everyone knows it. but for me, there's lots of things that I didn't know until quite recently. So like the first African-American woman in space is a woman called Mae Jameson. Mm. And again, that's the sort of thing where I go, well, that should be quite common knowledge. Yeah. In the same yeah. way that if you were asking about like the first African-American tennis player, male tennis player to win lots of stuff, it's, it's Arthur Ashe. People kind of know Arthur Ashe. Yeah. I think. <laughs> Maybe they so, don't. Um, who's the, the, the British astronaut that and, oh, and this is, I mean, I mean, well, that was oh. it. That was it. Was it? Yeah, it was. It, it, <laughs> the, it was the first male British astronaut, and oh. everybody went crazy about him, missing the oh, fact that we'd already had. I can't think of it. Is it Tim? <laughs> Someone in the chat will know. Sure. She, she, Jean, Jean Bellon saying Helen Helen Sharman for the yeah the first Helen British. Was, uh, well, definitely the one. Yeah. The one. Yeah, yeah, I get her and Sally Ride mixed up a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not very good. Um, it was, Tim, was, he, was Tim, he quite modern. Tim like, Peake is. Just, yeah, Tim just, Tim Peake is the. Tim Peake, yeah. Yeah, so we had, yeah. we had Tim Peake quite recently and Helen yes. Sharman ages ago. And so it's sort of, you know, loud, loud and absolutely, you know, I'm not going to dismiss Tim Peake's achievements because, you know, he, he's, he's gone to space and he didn't it's, even have yeah, to. I've still gone to space. I mean, I'm very know, high up at the moment, but yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Space. We're but, on the yeah, edge of space. About, I think that's a good example of kind of how culture has changed. So I imagine in the 80s you would, the nature of kind of access to information, in the 80s that would have been a notable news where everything, yeah. people would have remembered seeing it, it kind of goes down the ages that Helen Sharman was this British woman who went to space. Yeah. Tim Peake came at a time when there's just so much overload of information Yeah. that even if you're very aware of what's going on around you, you can just miss stuff. And I yeah. think people now miss like major news stories in yeah. a way that they wouldn't have even like 20 years ago i'd say yeah yeah like, um, um, miss, missing celebrity deaths which I yeah think, and being uh, convinced yeah. someone's dead and they're not dead or convinced they're still yeah. alive yeah. and they're not i've had in my head roy chubby brown had died no it was the other one it was jethro it was Jeffrey because yeah. they were talking about him in light of this whole Jimmy Carr thing and I was like why are they talking about him like he's still alive and it turns out he is so he is that, that'll be why that'll be why um, but yeah you, you just miss these kind of things and I don't get me wrong I don't think you'd miss kind of like a huge huge new, new story yeah. but things like today that whole thing about the Queen saying that Camilla can be Queen now Queen, queen of like, yeah which is not Queen Camilla like people are going to miss that it's not, it's not news not. yeah whereas like god yeah 10 20 years ago that would have been a big talking point, but I think that comes from how people access their current events and where they access yeah, it from yeah. and who they access it from. And most people is youngish people. It's going to be Twitter, but even my mum, you know, who's in her early sixties, you'll mention something to her, and it was completely passed her by. Yeah, yeah. She's just not 
on the radar of, of things that come up so you do for for life purposes i'm trying to be a bit more aware of what's going on around me but for like particularly quizzing purposes you kind of think i remember when the german chancellor the uh, the german leaders election happened german elections a few months ago yeah having to be or feeling i had to be alert for those because i was like that is like a straightforward pair that's going to come up in quiz and even learning the weird um different colored alliances for the german yeah. parties so like the jamaica coalition the kenya coalition all these things that like i think they came up once somewhere and they've never come up again yeah yeah and they might i might need to still remember um, them in the future but... jo jockey colors yes, i feel like jockey yeah. colors is, is just pure yeah. quiz quiz fodder but who's <laughs> yeah, who's gonna that in a long time who's gonna do get, that um racehorse trainers recently and i was just yeah. like no not even i don't even know where to start with that i will give you a surname if you want but i can't give you any more there is lots of things that feel like for, like and things that you just go but why would i know this like planes yeah. like obsessed with types of planes and you just think i'm, I'm not i don't fly a plane. why would i know this yeah, yeah. Here, here we are um, in you know yeah, I mean, in it now. I have no idea what this plane is and what it's called now, and what so, model. Uh, welcome to the oh, I think we can possibly we order drinks. Um, nice whilst uh, Bennett Foddy uh, drones on, um, let's do a little catch up with chat. So, uh, Jean Bellow saying, uh, I've been thinking recently about that question writing bias when watching Richard Osman's House of Games and looking at what kind of people win. An observation there from, from Maison Bellow. Um, Oh, so I read I read the Narnia books as a kid. Still couldn't name more than two. <laughs> uh, it just doesn't. Yeah, but it's, you know, some things just don't stick with you, do yeah, they? You just yeah. go like, I know that's a thing, but yeah. I don't care. So it's just gone from my head. And, and yeah, it is, it's sort of slightly unsettling those kind of uh, blind spots. Where, where it's, it's, that moment in your head where you're like, this is an absolutely valid question. There is no reason why I haven't come across this before. Yeah. But why have you asked me it? Because I don't know it. Yeah. And yeah. That, that how is, dare you? <laughs> how dare you? How dare you ask yeah. me things I don't know? Um, and this is reminding me, I've got a tragic, like, I've got what I call question database. Mm -hmm. And it's usually in response to those sorts of things where I just, in a panic, will write down somewhere I should have done by now. I will write down all seven Narnia books and I will try and write some sort of question to, yeah. to put it into context. But that will probably never come up again now. I'll I have... probably get on my way to learn them and then nobody yeah nobody will be interested uh, i think that's a really good point about house of games i know someone who was working on there and i don't know the makeup but i did do i I'm slightly worried i've signed an nda so i won't give too many details but i did a quiz run through last week and i went into central london and really like pleasant experience but everyone in the room they were white and they were male that was the makeup and this was a pretty large significant production team i would say yeah. and i don't know for certain if that is how professional quiz writers look i know in university challenges maybe a bit more diversity and i know in mastermind for example they outsource a lot so they don't have people internal they just go yeah. out and say yeah. you previously did a quiz or you you're known for doing so and so so can you write us questions on on this subject yeah. It's not kind of an area I'm looking to go into like professionally. Like I've been very lucky that I've written for places that are willing to pay me because my experience with theatre and blogging for like five plus years that oh, nobody really? paid me for anything. No. I got free drinks, I got free wine yeah. and that was fine. <laughs> but I'm now, the quiz world is very different and the quiz world is like, you've done some work and here's some money and it's not a ton of money, but we appreciate that you've, you've written stuff for us. Yeah. Um, I'm very lucky to be kind of let in the room and part of it is there isn't really many people in quiz that look like me but there's also not many people in quiz that kind of have my way of thinking so i'm not against don't think that if you had a shenin quiz there would be no white men in it for example yeah, there absolutely yeah. would but well, let's that, write questions in a really interesting way let's tackle stuff that we haven't before or the, stuff that we've kind of let slide or yeah yeah. yeah, just like like Drake, for example, comes up all the time, and it's like, no, do you not know the, any the, other rapper? The Jewish, the like, Jewish, the Jewish rapper. The Jewish rapper, Drake, yeah. Yeah. Toronto raps as bad Drake, and like, yeah. 
like there's so much going on in the music like music in particular is huge you should not be resorting to using the same person all the time because there's just so much going on and maybe there's too much and maybe people kind of feel a bit overwhelmed by subjects like that as, as writers yeah but that's why you have people who kind of go i'm keeping up to date i know what will play well amongst certain people i know it will play badly and that's that's the hardest thing yeah to really judge because everyone if you want quiz to be diverse you have to accept everyone has had very different upbringings. Yeah, yeah. And different and different lives now. And that's, I guess is the, the sort of the beautiful future, potential future, is that you have these sort of diverse uh, question bases that actually leads to um, not having, you know, Keith's really good on sports and Jim's really good on World War II. And <laughs> you, suddenly, you, suddenly, you, you, you have uh, um, Sajid's really good on Bollywood. And, you know, you, you, you end up with essentially... Right. In order to be a good quiz team, you you have to have a, a diversity yeah, of experience. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You need a, you only have so the, the format is you only have like in a team quiz. You usually have depending on the quiz like up to three or four people. So it's it's hard. It's, you're you're going to struggle to cover everything. So as an individual, you have to become more of a generalist, and that's yeah. hard. And I wouldn't expect anyone who is just doing it as a casual hobby to do that. I would expect them to say. Yeah, absolutely. I'm quite good on sport. I don't mind it. Um, you know, I like history. I like geography. All those kind of things. And then you, so the format of the main one, the league quiz, is that there's four people on each team. You get asked your own individual question, and if you get it right, you get two points. However, mm. if you don't know it, and depending on the format, you can either guess it, and it will go to your teammate who can actually get it right for a point, or there's something that we call no free guess which is if you guess it, it just goes over to the other side. Yeah. So you have to, you can't confer. So you're relying on hand signals and you are relying on trusting someone that when they say I'm confident with a fist, that they are confident. And there's yeah. many a times where I've had a fist out and I've been sure something's the right answer and it's been wrong. Um, yeah. Or you can did kind of go down in confidence depending on like yeah. what you are. So you're like, if I, I'm willing to take a guess if you don't know and you just kind of put out a little finger and then sometimes it works out really well yeah. and sometimes it doesn't yeah. so you have to have a good team dynamic of one people who can maybe cover a wide range so they can stop points going over to the other side because that's how yeah. kind of games are really won and lost it's not really about everyone getting their own questions it's about whether you steal the point from the other side yeah yeah. Um, and you, we've got situations. So my one of my current teams is like pretty young, and we're just struggling because the content is not very young at all. So you end up being like, we're not at that point yet. But I think over time, once we hear lots of things and do lots of quizzing, people do get to that point where they go, I know it, not because I'm particularly interested in it, not because I care, but just because I heard it before somewhere else or I read it before somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. And that's what really dominates so yeah i think you're right you will get people who have just have to accept that you can't rely on that one guy who knows something because actually they may not be there they might not be picked for the team that week yeah you've got to kind of go right this isn't my bag at all but can i make an educated guess if yeah. need be and, a, and a, a question that's kind of at the lower level should at least provide enough information for people to make an educated guess. There's, I was, there's a there's a sort of oh hello to Sweet Pea by the way who was raided. Uh, thank you very much for that raid. Welcome in. Hello. Welcome in. <laughs> uh, you, you, we called us. We're, we're, uh, this is the lovely Shanine Salmon, and we're having it. We're having a chat about uh, about things things in the world of Shanine Salmon. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? There's a there's a, a strange. Uh, I, I wouldn't say it was a skill because it's not it's not consistent enough but i have in the past been quite good at understanding where the quiz where the question setter's mind is and use that in order to answer a question is that because you know the person or just no. because no it's it's, just, it's, it's, it's from the wording of the question yeah it's almost like why almost like why are you asking this question because it's a it's a fairly dull question so the answer <laughs> has to be uh, an interesting Answer. Yeah, or something very dull as well, and then yeah, just, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, really which is where's the so where's boring. the art in that? Um, yeah. But uh, I think one example was I think it was, uh, and I'm probably going to get the details wrong because it was a long time ago. But it was um, whose last film, uh, last dramatic appearance in a film was The Killers, was in The Killers. I think it was the 
was the question. And um, this was during Ronald Reagan's premiership. Shows you how long ago this was. And <laughs> um, yeah, and it was just kind of like, oh, it's going to be Reagan because that's that's. Oh, because he's, yeah, he's current and exactly yeah. He was and an actor. And, yeah. yeah. So it's, yeah, a weird one. I have no idea. I couldn't name a single film that Reagan's been no, in. No, I couldn't. But... I've never seen his film work come up in, in quiz, actually, and that would be a really interesting question. Whereas if you, you know, you asked about Arnie, you, you would, you know, in relation to him being governor, you'd have so much that you could clue in with and it becomes quite a straightforward question. But yeah, a, a name a Ronald Reagan film, apart from yeah. The Killers now, yeah. uh, becomes yeah. way too tough. Oh, um, um, uh, American Psycho, does that count? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> I I count it. There was a weird question in one of the so I do so I do make primarily kind of like in person the kind of format I told you where you have to show your fist and you can't do that. Yeah. But I also do kind of quite a few individual and I've started doing more written quizzes, which in terms of the atmosphere is like being in a school exam and it's like why yeah. am I spending my Saturday morning doing this? But it's it's useful for revision and opening myself up to to either confirming stuff that I can pull or yeah. that I just know, or I don't know, but I'll I'll remember that in the future. And there was a question about, um, the wording was something like, which actor and music superstar died in May 1990, no, May 1998, and his final words were, I'm losing it. And I was just like, loads of people died in May 1998. Ooh. What What is this all you're giving me? I'm losing it. I, I'm losing it. And you, yeah, and again, is, is I'm losing it, is that a clue? Or is that relying on knowledge? So I'll let you. I'll let you take some time. What, if what you was want to what get. was the what was the so actor? Did you say or actor and musician? Actor and I'm musician. Sorry, actor music superstar was the word. Was it? Used. Uh, oh, Denver. Was it? Uh... It wasn't. No, but that would have been like a reasonable guess because yeah. you weren't given anything else. Yeah. Um. So I managed to pull it, and I'm still a bit like. It was, yeah. it was very much. I described a lot of things when you're not 100 percent sure. Where you do a lot of beautiful minding. Yeah. Like you kind of dig deep in that. your brain and go, well, it's maybe them, but yeah. they, ooh, they didn't they? Don't you get all the all the floaty clear. facts in front of you. Floaty facts of like yeah. pictures and images of people. So the answer is Frank Sinatra. Oh, wow. Okay. And I literally pulled that because I could think. I was like, who died around that time? I would have put him later if I'd been asked that completely separately, like when Sinatra died. I probably would have said early two yeah. thousand. Um, but I couldn't think of many acting and music superstars. So all I had in my head was like Elvis yeah. and like, and that was purely. I was like, who did a lot of acting? Who did a lot of singing? Who maybe died around? I that think time? the but that's like that's a hard pull, and that's not a particularly great yeah. question if you yeah. if you need more than that. But the, I, yeah, the, the hard steer there in the question. Is I'm losing it because I'm losing I mean, it. It's like exactly. what control over a vehicle, which is what what I thought. Because I think Denver died yeah. flying no, a plane. Just like, yeah, just at home, quietly dying, and that was his first yeah. last words to his wife. That's Nancy Sinatra tells a story. I think it's Nancy Sinatra, which is that basically um, uh, Frank was dying and she was at his bedside, and you know it's it's that usual thing. Like people don't die quickly, you know. No, no but people people days, take ages yeah. to die. Yeah. And uh, you can't be at somebody's bedside the whole time. No. And so she took like a, a basically 30 minute break to go and watch the last ever episode of Seinfeld. And when she came back, he'd gone. See, that would have been a great clue. He died during. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, suddenly <laughs> that's. Seinfeld. That's it. Yeah, and then we're that's like, it. yes. <laughs> that sounds yeah. like a Sinatra thing to do. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's so much and there's so many. There's so many kind of so, I'm, I'm, in. I'm now imagining I'm losing it. He, he's lo you're losing it. I'm losing. It. Sorry, I'm just I'm just uh, <laughs> Seinfeld just diner in the, the last verse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Sorry. Yeah, it's it's hard. I mean, I think one of the things I try and do when I'm writing what I call level one, so it's like you can you can get in somewhere. Is you try and clue it with something else. So I tend to write, I was writing about, um, this is gonna sound very pretentious. I was writing about Hulse, the planets, because I'm not very good at classical music. And I was writing for this summer friendly league and the guy editing, Andrew was like, Shanine, you need a classical music pair here. I was like, I don't know classical music. Like, I just don't, it just doesn't stay with me. Yeah. So the only thing I could think of at the time was the planets, because I was like, well, I can make that level one Hulse. and I can clue that yeah. in with, 
a planet. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. you can give a clue of which Greek god or Greek goddess names this sweet. And then yeah. that was that was the only way I could do it because that would be the only way I would get into a question like that. Um, yeah. And yeah, it's but then once you get harder, you I kind of see it as like once you get higher and higher, it's like actually you're a specialist. I you've done like a degree in this, or you're just like you're obsessed with that part of history or, or things like that. And like culturally, I've been I wrote a quiz for the online quiz league based in USA, and I had to be conscious that the majority of people playing it were American, so I had yeah. to throw in some American content which I'm not always comfortable with. I, I did a, a Mamiya, which is like an individual quiz, on US sitcoms, but from the point of view of someone who is British, I'm like, oh God, they're all gonna be like, who is this woman who hasn't lived here? But she's asking us about our sitcoms. But yeah, I had to, because the US they tried to make it truly international. And something that I would probably put at a lower level here, for example, um, monarchs, British monarchs, I immediately will kind of put at least one or two levels up for a different audience yeah um but in the same here if it's a president's question in the u.s yeah. it probably will play easier if it's yeah, here absolutely. it's probably going to be like one of my hardest ones like it's, yeah. as long as you're not asking like the obvious president if you're going a bit deeper and who was the 45th thinking, president 40, <laughs> 45th oh god can, uh, can we say his name <laughs> no, we're not allowed to. We're not allowed to. He's Just call him forty-five. He's been sponged from the record. I call him. I call him. I call him P for president. Forty-five. <laughs> P forty-five. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's like I mean, that's the other thing I've been revising tragically. I've been revising presidents, um, which has come in useful, but it's yeah. something that I wouldn't have consciously done because I've just been like, I'm British. I don't really need to know this. <laughs> and then increasingly, I do need to know it apparently. So um, yeah, yeah, I've been learning that. But yeah, there's just you have to, and the nature of it said it's it's being online, and it being online has made everything international. There's like a great, I don't play for it, but there's like an Indian league, and they have a rule that actually only one of the the quads, as we call them, mm. only one of them will be specific to India. Everything else will be international. Yeah, and that is the the focus now of saying actually let's let's gradually introduce some more interesting diverse content, but let's not we're going to alienate a lot of people if we overwhelm. Yeah. But I think at the same time you will see that Indian content come up in other quizzes because people have said that's a really interesting question. Why aren't I, we asking about it? I, th I think there's a sort of an economic and political element to that as well. I mean, not political as in PC political, yeah. but political in, in that. Um, if you're in a developing country, um, you kind of want to push people to know more about the world at large. In in any case, yeah, so you kind really. of. I, yeah. I, I once saw a um, something which made a similar point about languages, which was basically that if you're if you're an English person and you're in Sweden and you've learned a bit of Swedish, it is of less value to you to practice your Swedish in Sweden than it is for the Swedish people that you are interacting with to practice their English on you. Yes, exactly. It's way, way more valuable to them to practice their English. They like to... they want to show off how good their English is. <laughs> well, I think, I think that's possibly part of it. But yeah, it's kind of like, no, the, the economic value of you learning your Swedish, Swedish. You're learning yeah. Swedish for fun, basically, whilst they, you know, they, yeah, there, they're going there somewhere. Like, yeah, and it's like, God, I can't remember a name now. Um, question came up about that the swedish prime minister is it, is it anderson maybe i don't know um she was like she was the swedish prime minister and then she resigned like the next day oh yes yeah yeah. and then she came back and like that's a notable news story and if that was in this country if that was in the u.s it would be huge yeah but because it's kind of this like nordic <laughs> situation yeah. like people just like european stuff even to us like particularly European current events, yeah, it just seems like it's, it be, automatically becomes a hard question. It's like actually these these things are on our doorstep. Like these are quite local, and these could have an impact on British politics in particular. Yeah. And yet it's just automatically gone. No, people don't know that. It's hard. Flight attendants will be coming yes. around the yeah. cabin with our in-flight service. Oh, will be serving a snack. A snack. Along with a variety of complimentary soft drinks, juices, and coffee. Ooh. What are you having? Wine and other alcoholic beverages are available for purchase. 
Now oh. we invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the flight. We're above the clouds. That's not so we know where we are. Uh, look, there's a little... Now, um, in order to make the uh, uh, title sequence for this chat show, <laughs> I, I had to build one of these um, windows in Blender. Oh. And there's a little hole there. And um, basically, because of the pressure differences, oh. the thing is that they they don't, and I, I possibly possibly this is just a money saving thing, in that in order to <laughs> in order to make the glass of that particular thing, because that's not like the out the external window, that's an internal window. Yes, so then there's like a gap, yeah. and then a the thing, another yeah. window. Yeah. So, so if if the, if that was a sealed chamber, it would uh, it would basically crack. Possibly the external would crack. I don't know. Uh, with with the with the changes in pressure, so there's a tiny little hole. There's a tiny oh. little hole in there. And, See, and, this is the sort of thing I need to be asking quiz. Why is there a tiny little yeah, hole in a, in a plane window? Yeah. Always, <laughs> always double check any, check anything that I tell you. About that. Um, I will next time I go on a plane. I will be yeah. double checking for the hole. Excuse now. me. Excuse me. Air steward. Um, this little hole in the window. <laughs> Why? Uh, Why is it there? What does it do? Yeah. But it, it frosts up. This is again what I love about this game. About this game, so that that gets a little sort of bit of uh, condensation around it oh, during the flight. That's it. It's these nice little details. Brilliant. Uh, oh. oh, see options. Ah, uh, now. I think I've had the apple juice. Uh, should we have the soda water? I don't think I've had the soda water. Oh, yeah, oh, that awesome. feels like a nice. Yeah, if you get a spirit with it, you can have a Tom um, Collins. <laughs> Uh, oh, there we go. No, no confirmation. Just like straight up. No, nope, that's what you're getting. They'll come round. That's, I don't care if you sneeze. You're having a ginger ale. <laughs> yeah. Groggy, Bobby, um, welcome. Uh, so, um, I suppose the other great love of your life, and we've we've touched on this slightly. Well, two two, two great loves really. Two, yeah. should, I, should we do the, should we do film talk? Let's do film talk. Let's do the film films, talk. Films so, have been very useful in my life, actually. The, so the, the bad ones. During during lockdown, um, uh, Shadeen and I and, and some some other ne'er do wells. Um, <laughs> sorry, I went a bit Terry Wogan there. Some some other ne'er do wells. Um, <laughs> yeah, like they, we can't legally name them. We can't legally name them. Certainly not Emma. And um, <laughs> yeah, would uh, we we'd get together via Zoom uh, on a Friday night. And we would watch a now it, it, the the exact sort of nature of what we were watching sort of floated around a little bit. But I think yes. we finally settled on films that were that were f financially flopped, so it wasn't necessarily yeah that were kind of I would but, say not critically acclaimed was probably I felt like maybe we watched stuff that actually did make money but certainly yeah. audiences and critics alike didn't like them yeah. that would probably yeah. be the fairest like how badly did they do on Rotten Tomatoes if they even got that far in some cases and uh, what would you say was the was the worst film that we uh... I think it might have been my pick which was um, Showgirls 2 Showgirls 2 which was um, if you've ever seen Inland Empire I would want to know what Inland Empire would look like if it was um not made by David Lynch and was a sequel to <laughs> Showgirls. Yeah, yeah a, very, a very long time after Showgirls as well. Like, yeah. good. When was it made? Was it like 2003? Or was it like 2013? It was something. Yeah. Like she, to be fair, the woman in it looked great. Like, she oh, yeah. still yeah, looked yeah. like you could have, it could have been a like more recent sequel. But yeah, it was such a vanity project. And you rarely, I was looking up kind of reviews of it later on. And there was a whole podcast about it, which I haven't listened to yet. But basically, the reason they did it, they were like, women never do vanity projects like yeah, this. Like, yeah. It's always men. And in some cases, you're just like, well, fair play. Like, we should be yeah. encouraging women to do their own vanity projects, but not as bad as this. This is, It was just too long. And I'm still not really sure what the story was. Good God. It was 2011. I'm reliably was it 2011? Oh, my God. By, by him upstairs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was just it didn't really feel like it belonged in any era as well like it could have feasibly been made yeah. 
sometime after 1995. That's that's yeah. all I could have told you about. It, it. it did. It um, felt. It did feel like sort of late 90s. Um, yeah, all, it was suddenly very, videos cheap, sort of. Yeah, exactly. There was a kind of slightly grainy odd air to it as well just it didn't feel like and just a lot of shots and it's clear this the poor woman whose name i can't remember hadn't done that much directing hadn't no. probably worked in many films afterwards even though she had she'd worked with lynch she'd worked with obviously for hoven yeah um yeah it was it was a baffling experiment that, that just didn't and it wouldn't have worked with anyone else like it's very much showgirls of, is of its time but yeah. yeah i like those kind of the ones that I think are genuinely bad. And that one, to be fair, that was bad in, and not in an interesting way. Whereas <laughs> yeah. there were some that were kind of, they were bad and they weren't yeah. great, but they were actually like, they were doing slightly more with what yeah. they had. Yeah. And if, um, fun. Fun is a... <laughs> fun is a key, I'll, yeah. It's even, almost yeah, undervalued, I think. Fun is forgivable. And it's this all... was not fun at all. Uh, I, feel, I feel like fun, fun is almost an undervalued sort of thing in, in cr- criticism. Is it? Yes, no, actually, and that's what, I think that's why I quite like the original Showgirls because I yeah. mean, there's parts of it that are not fun, but actually yeah. there are elements of it that it's you know it's very glitzy. It doesn't really take itself that seriously. Yeah. Um, at a time where I think a lot of films were, whereas, it's, yeah, I think the thing with Showgirls is that Verhoeven sort of pitches it, and there is an argument for us, but pitches it very much as a sort of a feminist picture. Yeah. And, and you're kind of thinking, there's quite a lot of muff in it for a feminist picture. Yeah, and I think, you know, I'm trying to think if it passes the Beckdale test, and I think it might. Yes, actually. because at one point, two they female characters have a talk about dog chow. They talk about dog chow, yeah, yeah. they talk about so, dog um, food. And thus, it passes the Beckdale oh. test, and thus it is a feminist film. So, there we go. Um yeah, but it was. I mean, I can't remember exactly how many weeks we did it. There's a lot that I have forgotten that I would probably be like, I'd, if I saw it on a list, I'd go, oh god, yeah, we did watch that. I'm trying to remember the one where we brought it back and it had the weird gang. Oh, the Gatwick Gangsters. Gatwick Gangsters, yeah. yeah Gatwick Gangsters was the closest we got to like a Showgirls 2 vibe, I think. Yeah, yeah. The thing that really puzzles me about Gatwick Gangsters, and, and I kind of. There should be a podcast really about Gatwick Gangsters about the making of that because <laughs> it's that, just that deeply, f- deeply fascinating. That, yeah. yeah, and uh, I saw something recently. Someone who who wasn't related to our our film night, who saw they said something like thanks to Pizza Hut for like giving us a pizza box. Like yes, yeah, pizza, yeah, just, just the box, just the box. Just the box. <laughs> and it, it did feel like this. This had about three hundred people in it. This film. Yes. And it was made over a very long time. Filming on like weekends because yeah. they all just like had proper jobs. And, and there is there is that thing, and I saw people sort of reacting because the, the reason we saw it essentially is because uh, the trailer sort of floated into people's uh, purview on Twitter. Yes. And um, and I got slightly obsessed with that scene with the helicopter. Um, but. Uh, <laughs> It, Have you recreated the helicopter yet? That's what I want to know. I feel like there's going no, to be on. I should do. I should. Jack's do. off on a helicopter. Yes. With, um... <laughs> we could get a hairdryer, a blower. I once did that. I once pretended. We did a god. We again, not not at all middle class uh, uh, upbringing, <laughs> but uh, we did. A, we had this sort of thing when families in at school were acquiring camcorders and the like. Uh, that we had this. Um, an, an assignment where we could get together in teams. You see, clever, because not everybody, not everybody had a camcorder. Everyone had a camcorder, yeah. Exactly, um, and do a. This was for um, religious uh, and social education, or whatever it's called, RSC, uh, to do it like a, um, a film about the parting of the Red Sea. Wow! And epic. We, we we did it like a sort of ENG kind of package, and uh, we. Um, we found ourselves for for the idea was that we were in a helicopter, but obviously we did not have access to a helicopter. And no. Perhaps perhaps at this point I should make a, a formal apology to Gatwick Gangsters. Um, so we were <laughs> in um, Michael Acton Smith's um, upstairs balcony. All balconies are upstairs. That was redundant. Um, <laughs> just what is of, it if it's downstairs? Like just a porch? That's just a that's just a veranda, isn't it? Yes. Um, but. Uh, 
um, with a hair dryer blowing our hair that was too short, really. It was too I short. It doesn't seem like the sort of school. I don't I can't imagine you going to a school where everyone had long hair. No, no, not at all. Um, and it was, I, th- I think, uh, was it Colin Mitchell or I think was the other. I don't know why I'm naming them. But, um, <laughs> I feel like they're, they're going to sue us more than the field at the front. Yeah, of absolutely. For this memory. Yeah. And, uh, but it was a sort of, so the idea I think was that they, we were getting like a bird's eye view of the parting of the Red Sea. And, um, and it was sort of like in the background, it was uh, clearly Michael Acton Smith's back up. So, no uh, sea, no, no sea. sea, no sea to be seen no. anywhere. Maybe it was so it was parted so far. It's now grass. That, uh, grass sprung up. <laughs> yeah, maybe that was it. But um, I mean, that, that to be fair, that sounds more adventurous than um. Oh. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, so it, it, it goes back up again. More adventurous than what Gatwick gangsters did with just Willie Fawn standing outside. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> standing too <laughs> close to a helicopter. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and not even doing like you know like in succession where um you n- you'll notice they never duck when they walk in and out of helicopters that's a point that i raised on the yeah th- there's two ways of doing it there's like yeah so like, urgent so mission much- urgent mission you duck yes, and you're like and you ducking down. sometimes hold your hand over your yeah. for, for some reason <laughs> things are going and you're just gonna yeah, chop off my exactly. hair and yeah, yeah. Yeah, but um, total power move is to just disregard it altogether. Just, yeah, just walk in because they use helicopters so frequently. They're like, well, they're not going to chop off my head, so yeah. I can just go in and out. And there was none of that in Gatwick. <laughs> so yeah. You didn't see them. I don't think they were allowed to touch it. That's my memory of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. They just like had to just stand very sort of slightly too close, oh, but not. I think possibly at the end somebody opens the door. Oh, someone someone opens the doors and they turn yeah, around, and yeah. I think that's end end scene. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that. But the Friday Night for Fox had some, I think, actually quite interesting stuff. Like I think um, Bula Quo, brilliant, would have was yeah, was genuinely very good. I mean, it like, was terrible, but it was brilliant. It was like yeah, but it was like it was good for a bad film. Yeah, and yeah. had some like interesting. And you were kind of engaged throughout, whereas there's a lot of them where you just go, oh god, we've got another like hour and a half. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Still, yeah. like we've had half an hour. So we, one of the rules was just to try and keep them as short as possible. Yeah. Because they're just like a hundred minutes of a bad film is all right. Like a hundred to two, so a hundred like like hundred forty to two hundred is like too much. We didn't do cats. Cat, uh, we didn't do cats. I did watch yeah. Cats with a friend recently, and I was staggered at how bad it was. But uh, this is me being gossipy. So my friend used to work for Universal. Thank you. And she told me when the trailer came out, I said to yeah. her, "Like, what the hell was that? Like, what is happening?" And apparently, he, like the Phantom of the Opera, was like just in this dark room by himself, editing this film. Really? Nobody at Universal was taking, like, nobody was checking up on him and coming in and like, "How's it looking? What's going on?" The first they saw of it was that trailer. God. I was like, imagine having that power that you were just like, nobody's yeah, micromanaging yeah. you. You're just left in a room editing this terrible green screen based <laughs> film. Yeah. And it and is really, if anyone hasn't seen it, like part of me is like, don't watch it. But then it's... part of me is like, to watch it to understand why people think it's so bad rather than just. It's it's the, there's a certain there's a sort of theatrical tradition of musicals that aren't really musicals they're just a collection of songs, and the plot is really just there to join the songs together. Yeah, like, exactly. It's really Cat, just about Cats yeah, is, it's in my songs. Cats is is oh it's it's basically a T. S. Eliot book of poems that A. L. W. Yeah. was set to music. So yeah, the plot's totally unimportant, really. And the, but as soon as I you got, stick it into a film. Oh, it's even more nonsensical because yeah. at least so in the musical, which I've not seen, the stage musical, the white cat is like this basically background character, and then in the film they need a focus. Yes, they yeah. they make this kitten the focus, and it's like you've got this actress who, as far as I'm aware, is a very talented ballet dancer, but is not an, an experienced actress. Yeah, you've got a sense as well in the beginning. It feels like, and I have been. To, this is not being me being horrible. It feels like a student production. And I don't mean that it's amateur. It's more that you've got people who are on their way to becoming professionals, but they're not at that stage yet. Because they're just trying to get their head around what skills they need and the confidence and all those things. And it just felt, yeah, it did feel very like it was cheap. And all the money went on um, 
looked at you grabbing your soda water. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Hello. Hello. Oh, sorry, I forgot my pretzels. Oh, oh. <laughs> I was wondering what she was like still having. That was around terrifying. Yeah. I was starting to look out, look around for the big green pod. Uh. Um. Yeah, it's it's really really shocking, and it's ultimately the thing about cats is it's really dull. Like it's just that you just about the sense of fun. There's just no sense of fun in it because yeah. it's it's a I don't know I don't know why it was so bad and I don't know why someone signed that off. But you've got a situation where Tom people had done Les Mis and I think people just like we trust him, he'll be fine. Yeah, thank you. And the impression I got, and I don't know if I always get this with films, was you had a man who actually didn't like the source material. Yeah, at yeah. all, just didn't yeah. didn't have any time for it. This is and sort suddenly of... you're in charge of interpreting it in a way that is watchable. And it's like, well, if you hate it, why am I going to like it? There's a, there's a sense of, all right, I've done Les Mis, what's next? You yeah, know? and at least Les Mis has got a story. Yeah. Like, Les Mis is a very different... As you said, Cats is about Andrew Lloyd Webber reading T.S. Eliot and going, let's make a musical about yeah. Cats. Because he'd done, like, Starlight Express, etc., and he could do those kind of just interconnecting things. Yeah. Whereas, like, Les Mis comes from a book, and, like, a genuine... <laughs> and um yeah it's I, I don't know so again i mean i'm now from a like my theater point, oh have a <laughs> do have a do have a, of the bag do you have a pretzel hang on men mentally 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 choose a pretzel mentally choose oh, a pretzel um okay. the one don't, don't, I, okay um when i say mentally, oh, mentally sorry hang on I'll yeah, choose a that's one. fine choose a different one <laughs> okay here we go there we go live yeah. mentalism is it? Oh yes, that was my next oh, option. You see, yeah. ah. <laughs> power, yeah, power of power, power of the power human magic. Then. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I I don't know, and I I would be intrigued if there's another sort of cat style film. You know, what the next musical adaptation? Because like, dear Evan Hansen has done really badly as well. Um, I don't know if you've been following the film. I don't know no, if it's actually got released. I, I know yet. that the the stage shows. Hugely liked. Huge, huge, huge. The story to me has always been a bit morally dubious. I think my partner wants to go and see it, but I've never actually yeah. booked book tickets, so maybe I will this year. Um, um, I don't think there's any but, wrestling in it, though, is there? No, I'm surprised. Occasionally, he will be like, I'm not going to theatre with you, I don't want to see that. And then he'll say that he wants to see something, and I get very excited. So we went to see um, Back to the Future musical. Oh, yes. For his birthday. Yeah. Um, and it was so cold he had to put his hat on. That's my uh, review of the best wow. TV musical. But um, yeah, Dear Evan Hansen has got the guy who was in the original stage show playing the lead role, except he's aged quite badly. So he just looks like this old man hanging around like high school students. Well, and it's yeah. so distracting. So the film's got some kind of really bad reviews. Um, and they keep kind of doing this. I'm kind of wondering what's the next big musical that will be made into a film. Yeah. Because film is still, I mean, the prices of theatre, which I could probably drone on about for another hour plus, yeah, yeah. but the prices of theatre are shocking at the moment. And it's yeah. about, they were shocking before. I keep talking about before times, but they were. Before times, they were pretty bad. But you could usually find a decent seat. If you're going to make a night of it, then it was worth spending like 45 to 50 quid. Yeah, yeah. Now you used to have things what they call premium, and you're talking £100 plus for the seat. You're yeah. not even getting like a meal or drinks with that. Just it's, it's just the seat. So I'm very lucky. I've got a friend who I've met through quiz who's great. He finds like these really cheap tickets, and he always he like he invites me, and he's like, I'm like, how much is it? It's like it's always like a tenner, and we always yeah. get really nice. So he does like fri um like the Friday rush that National Theatre have and stuff. But theatre now is even the really awful seats. You're still looking at like twenty five to thirty five quid. Yeah. Which, yeah. if you want to go a lot, is actually to me still, you know, I grew up poor. That's still a lot of money for yeah, like yeah. one night for something that might not be very good. So you're now feasibly seeing Hamilton was doing this before lockdown. I think more are following after because they desperately need money. Two hundred pounds for a seat. Yeah. I just don't know how. I don't. And I, mean, I think the thing is, is as as uh, as we exist in a not wanting to get too political. But, uh, uh, tr trickle up economics. Yes. Um, then it sort of, it, in that respect, it makes sense that actually you are gonna you are gonna get enough people buying those two hundred quid 
seats no, to actually see it. Yeah, you can have that level of disposable income. Yeah. And it's like, I'm at a point in my life that if I really wanted to see a show, I could probably put aside, not every month kind of thing, but you know, I could save up for a few months and put aside that money. But morally, I don't want to pay that. Yeah. I don't think theatre should be this big event. I think theatre should be as whether it is you're going into the West yeah. End and you have that accessibility, or you're just going to your local theatre. Like I'm reviewing tomorrow, and I don't actually review that much anymore because I don't have the time and I don't really get invited to very interesting stuff. But I'm seeing Hairspray oh, at yes. the uh, Churchill Theatre in Bromley. Um, and that's the sort of space where actually that should be quite accessible. To be honest, because I get free tickets still, I don't actually know how cheap that is. And even so, being being in Bromley, you're still, you know, you're probably quite close to London. You know, why wouldn't you just go into London if that show is on? Um, we, were, we were lucky well, enough to see um, Andrew Scott perform Sea Wall at the Traverse yes, in so, Edinburgh yeah. uh, for probably about 12 quid tops I think in this tiny little room and it's like this is like a a, 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 a one-man play it's a, essentially a, a monologue extended monologue and um, uh, Traverse 2 it was yes Dan so you know this tiny tiny place Ooh. and um, and it was wonderful and and uh, I think man's coming around with a rubbish so I just hang on, oh, no. first just finish my uh, finish uh, up your socials <laughs> flip the table gassy. flip the table um, yeah and then uh, quite suddenly and I think basically because Andrew Scott had become a bit of a, a darling finally you know and well deserved yeah after he, Sherlock he became like, there was that kind yeah. of core like big names and he is a good actor Absolutely. and yet you you lose that um so I can't remember where they did it, but again, it, they moved. I saw it online because yeah. I couldn't afford That's it, yeah. to see it in person. I basically said, um, oh, "Oh, you know, the usual sort of, you know, beg, borrow, or steal a ticket to see it. Yeah. It's amazing." And then, and then I sort of thought, "Oh, it's eighty quid." Yeah. Well, like, forget that, man, boys. Yeah, it's like yeah. under an hour. But then you you get these key things. Like I saw one of my favourite actors is Stephen Ray. Yeah. And I saw him in the Royal Court upstairs back in. 2017? No, it must have been 2016 because it was one of the first things I reviewed for my blog. Hello. And that was like, I can't remember how much I paid for tickets. It was like maybe 10, 20 quid, something like that. And like, I know he's not like the biggest name, but to be in an intimate space with an actor of that caliber. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. It's, it's rare. It's still rare. And it's because actors can't afford to do theatre of that, yeah. that level. Um, you were kind of seeing, I think um, Jerusalem's coming back in the summer. Yes, yeah. Um, which which is, I think we're off to see. Are you off to see as well? Yeah, I yeah. managed to convince my father. He was like, I'm not sure I really want to see it. And I'm like, I hear it's amazing. I wouldn't usually... Oh. I didn't realise it did that. Extended. Uh, <laughs> um, sorry. Yeah, I wouldn't usually go and see. And we haven't spent like a ton on it, but I don't think we've got the best seats. And it's just... Oh, well. But I can't even think of what else is kind of... Things are coming up like... um, God, I always get them mixed up. Amy Adams in the glass menagerie is at some theatre soon and so you're seeing kind of all these big names being thrown at things so you can justify asking yeah. people for a hundred plus Absolutely. for a ticket yeah. because yeah. And, and i can't i'm not complaining about the theatres i think they are all struggling and they were struggling beforehand the, the cost they were the ticket prices before never really covered what they needed to cover yeah and now you're like well is it even covering anything and you're just asking people you know you've got these half empty theatres now yeah yeah, but you're not say as well, you're not... the the economics of, of theatre, broadly speaking, is that you you, you run the, the the pantos and get the money in, <laughs> and then that's that sort of cushions. Yeah. The... Or you you rely. I think the West End must rely on kind of bar takings and, and yeah, things. Yeah, and absolutely. General, the economy sort of happening, but like, I don't know. It's like again. I'm not even sure people want to even be going to the bar. And we had an incident when we saw Back to the Future at, I think it was Aldrich Theatre. Or is it Fordville? It's one of those. One of those on the Strand. And my partner went down to see if he could get an ice cream. And he didn't have any cash because nobody has any cash on them anymore. Yeah. And they, went, they were like, no, we can only take cash. And it's like, get a card machine. Like, why? why? Yeah. It's the 20th century, man. It's the 20th century. <laughs> we have... 
we have got hovercrafts and everything. Like yeah. it was baffling. And it's like you, but your bar has a like why? Like pubs have a portable car yeah. machine. Like why doesn't this? So you're like, well, you're now screwing yourself out of people who want to buy a three quid ice cream. Yeah. Three quid plus probably now, um, and can't because they don't have cash on them because society has said actually we shouldn't be using cash it's not hygienic yeah it's so so i kind of yeah yeah. i struggle in that situation where i'm like well actually if you really want to make money you'd invest in making sure people can spend money with you um and And you'd make you'd make theater accessible this is why theater immediately without much effort becomes suddenly a middle class passion yeah yeah because it's too expensive and when it isn't a middle class passion it's I'm nearly it swearing. Shouldn't be. It's amazing, yeah. you know. So it, yeah. yeah, exactly. It should be. It should be accessible to all. But you're seeing it from. Sorry to get all serious, but you're seeing it from the point of view. Like most schools now, most state schools, a lot of them don't have drama departments. Yeah. The drama that they need to to do is incorporated into the English department. Yeah, and then it's um, not. It's never. You're not teaching it for acting. You're teaching it for the English. As, as reading the, the text, yeah. 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 And increasingly, for example, so the National Theatre have, and they've had this for years, but they've got a collection that is accessible to schools. Yes. And the reason it's accessible to schools, which is great, you know, and it be, and, and NT at home, if anyone's not familiar, is where they, they're putting on their NT live productions is a great resource. It's like it's like eight quid a month, eight, nine quid a month, and you can watch, um, I can't think of any examples, but lots of National Theatre productions plus even yeah. Yerma as well which was on at the um, the Young Vic but schools now have that resource because they can't afford or they can't ask pupils to go and see their local production yeah yeah and that's not how theatre theatre is great but it's not meant to be seen on screen and I'm very pro it being accessible because a lot of theatres aren't accessible in terms of both physically and maybe like mentally yeah but equally you're not going to have this generation who found their passion in going to see this live show because they're not going to see a live show. They're going to see it on screen. And you might as well just show them like a film adaptation. And I just think theatre on screen is, is it's great that it's there, but it's not the same experience. And when lockdown was happening, I struggled. I tried to review a few on screen things, some that were like live Zoom productions, others that were just recordings. And it's like, is this a film? What am I reviewing here? What's the yeah. technique? And it's a lot different. And I can go into a, a live show and I can say what works and what doesn't. I find it really hard the moment you say, right, you're watching this on your computer screen, you're watching on your television. Yeah. And I think, yeah. I, I have mixed, I don't want to say get rid of it, but I, I want acknowledgement from particularly theatre yeah. practitioners using it. I it's mean, a I, different medium. I love, I, I love, I love the sort of pipe, piping stuff into cinemas thing. Yes, actually, but, that's true. I used to love it. I went to see the audience with Helen Mirren then. And I yeah. feel like because the screen was so big, maybe like in my mind, I felt like I saw it live. And yeah. I think it would have been, yeah. like, have to... It might have been a different experience if I had, but I didn't hate it. Whereas watching it on my like tiny computer screen or like on my television at home, it's just like I can't engage with this. Like I can't put myself in a mindset that I'm just not distracted by life around me. Yeah. Whereas in the cinema and in the theatre, you've got kind of people around you and you feel like you're part yeah. of something. It's an event. It's an event, exactly. There's, there's, an, old, there's an old saying that we, we look up to cinema and we look down at television. Yes. I, think that's, I think that's it, because it, it's physically... You, we physically it's physically that. quite... In, yeah, it's quite yeah intimidating in some senses, but it feels like... Because nobody, as big as televisions get, very few people have kind of cinema size screens in their home. Yeah. And, like television is so like tele- people directing for television or, or making television are doing such a good job on that medium that you don't need this kind of slightly inferior feeling yeah theater on television yeah. so it's quite interesting like anything goes is on that on like i play at the moment um and yeah my experience i mean same with i don't know if you saw hamilton on disney plus um i may have done <laughs> well that's exactly so we saw Hamilton live when it yeah. came well about a few months after it came out and then when it came on Disney Plus we watched it and I thought the directing like the camera angles and things were just absolutely shocking it was like yeah. it was like underneath people a lot and it was like this isn't like a theatre view that someone would have yeah yeah like it wasn't being shot it is, from it is difficult. an audience perspective it's, yeah it, it's that thing of well do you 
it's how far I am I representing a, the experience of going to the theatre am I trying to show what is happening on stage yes to the exactly best of pos- um, yeah, it's a di- I yeah. think it's a difficult question it's Certainly. what the balance is meant to be and what actually yeah. the audience is watching and as someone who goes to the theatre a lot I want to recreate as much of the theatre experience as possible but there is the argument to say well if you want that go to the theatre if you yeah. want just a television with decent close-ups etc yeah except it's a film treat it as a film move on um but yeah i i don't think anyone has quite worked out how to direct theater on screen yeah well yet and because you've got people like me who's actually i want it to be as close to the theater experience but you have lots of people who if you're not familiar with the theater experience why would you want that yeah yeah. You know, if you don't go to the theatre, you're just your attitude is going to be actually I'm not familiar with that level of angles or whatever. So I want it to be like watching television or a film. Yeah, yeah. And I feel I feel like there isn't enough of a um, uh, industry, I guess, of um, of of filming of filming theatre. It for, hasn't for had, you, I think it hasn't yeah. had the chance to really develop a form or yeah. I think it will really need someone to really take control of the genre and say, yeah. I'm someone who has directed theatre and I've directed television and I think we can make it work. Yeah. And so far, it doesn't always... I mean, you see that when directors, theatre directors move into film and television. There's very few that cross over that well. Yeah. That baby's off again. The baby's off. The baby's been very grumpy. Uh. Whole flight. <laughs> I think, um, I think there might be two babies now. Oh, that might, yeah, oh no, they're gonna, one's going to set the other one off. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh. But yeah, I don't, I don't know, I don't have the answer to this, and I don't really, to be honest, kind of post-lockdown, theatre isn't that pleasant to go to because you have to kind of keep your mask on throughout. Yeah, yeah. And it's just, I'm not, I'm far from anti-mask, I'm very pro-mask. But yeah. in those kind of already quite uncomfortable environments. If you're just sat there. If you're just sat there, if you're not yeah. outside and you're not getting some fresh air and there's nothing. It, but that's why Back to the Future was so cold because they put in obviously this new air conditioning system to kind of make people yeah. like feel like, oh, fresh air. <laughs> just like, I'm just cold. Freezing. I'm just cold and I'm yeah. wearing a mask. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I sort of miss theatre to an extent. I'm still booking for things and stuff. But yeah. It's always with a slight dread of like, actually, I think this is theatre now. You're going to have to keep your mask on. It's going to be expensive. Yeah, yeah. And you have to hope that you're having a nice time. And that's why you end up booking things like Jerusalem that are already critically acclaimed. You don't yeah. take the risks yeah. on things that are that are new and unknown to you. Yeah. Yeah, no, Jer- Jerusalem we've seen an embarrassing number of times already. So. <laughs> I'm not, no, I mean, I do get this for me. It's like, I've heard it's amazing. They've got Rylands back. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a it's a hot ticket. It's a, again, that's the sort of thing. I'm fine with theatres for the next few years being like, let's put on something really boring and safe that we know will make money. Yeah. And it's like you you don't have time to experiment now, which for the diversity of theatre is bad. Totally. But yeah. the diversity of theatre was struggling before anyway. Like yeah. you know, you see white audiences clearly uncomfortable because they they put on like their favourite theatre has put on this very black play or whatever. Yeah. And they just have no idea. Like my night, upstairs there was, like, at the white royal people. court. Yeah, upstairs. Yeah. That's always upstairs. Always upstairs. That upstairs and Northern Irishmen. That's who got upstairs at the royal court yes. occasionally. Yeah. They might let you downstairs, but only when like Black Lives Matter happens, then yeah. they let the black yeah. people into the downstairs. But yeah, like Seven Methods of Killing. Kylie Jenner ended up downstairs and it just didn't yeah. like it was a good play but it was it's an intimate play and you can't yeah. just throw it downstairs and go oh we're representing black writers and it's like yeah but the white audience are not enjoying this and they don't yeah. get it yeah and the, particularly the older white audiences just didn't even know who Kylie Jenner probably was it was just yeah. like what there is a play it's absolutely a place but kind of yeah know your audiences and if if you know actually you you rely on just kind of old white people then put on your old white people plays just make sure that people of colour in the audience feel welcome uh, the, the boy's pointing out that uh, Demi Tucker Green's random was downstairs which was uh, oh she's yeah. a big name though yeah, she's yeah, like yeah. She, they've let her make a film with Idris Elba so she's like a big name <laughs> yeah um, but yeah it is getting harder and I think that's still I think representation so it's all well and good you know you like you've got 
like the one for me, um, and I will come off this too, but like Small Island at the National Theatre, which again was very critically acclaimed. Yeah. And I didn't like it because I felt it was like black people through a white gaze. Yeah. Yeah. And that's like, that doesn't make it diverse. If it's just white people writing about black people and then yeah. kind of relishing in like racial, horrible language, like, yeah. it's not it's pleasant for actually, a black person yeah. to be in the audience for that when yeah. that's going on. It's just, it's just not. So, um, I noticed as well with um oh god I can't remember it was Cypress Avenue the, the Stephen Ray play I mentioned earlier oh yes when yeah, it was yeah. at the upstairs it used so this this is the, this is the play where a, a chap becomes convinced that his granddaughter yes. is, is, is the Jerry reincarnation Adams. of Jerry Adams yeah who is still looks alive. exactly Jerry Adams yeah, yeah so well, he's, he's like, it just is Jerry Adams yeah yeah it's uh, so it's basically about identity and like it clearly yeah. his mental illness and things. But in the original downstairs version, he says something racist to his like psychiatrist. Yes. In the upstairs version, when it came back a couple of years later, that line's been cut. Interesting. So we're, we're seeing those changes. And I think on one hand, it's like, well, actually, if you want to show a character is quite horrible, yeah, have them use horrible language. And I'd say this, if it's but, not necessary, then yeah. it's just fetishizing horrible language. And I think, I think that's unpleasant. I think you're supposed to like him, aren't you? That's I sort think, of the point. It, it you start Ray, off liking him, and then, him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then by the end, it's like, how have you ended up here? Yeah. Yeah. Stephen Ray's amazing hair. He's like 70, hang on. Yeah, he's like 75, I think. And he's still, I don't know if you've seen the interview. I'm obsessed with Stephen Ray. There's an interview with him and Tommy Turnham. And he's just got yeah. this long, naturally dark hair. And it's like, how? How have you avoided <laughs> aging? Ray, yeah. Yeah, I, I, Irish Irish don't cry rush. <laughs> that's, uh, that's what that is. Um, but yes, yeah, so with, with some time to go, I haven't mentioned buffets yet. I was, I was wondering oh, if you've been to no. buffets. Um, no, um, not well. Um, we've well, been we've, to a couple of Chinese ones yeah. together, haven't we? We went to yeah. I think that was that was one time. I I'm not really sure what's happening with buffet. I, we went to like the there's um a chain of like a few chains of brazilian meat restaurants where they kind of come around with meat on skewers oh yes yeah yeah which are kind of my i think my favorite genre of buffet because you're kind of like people listen to this going that's not like buffet but they come around with like unlimited meat <sighs> and then there's like a salad bar which is kind of where the veggie there's meat stuff there as well but you yeah. just can help yourself to that and like sides and i'm obsessed with like the brazilian cheese balls which are basically these like gluten-free they're great they're cool. amazing yeah. um so we went there last week um and that seems to be back to normal again it's not like sneeze guards or anything yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. although you kind of want the sneeze guards to stay you kind of want to the sneeze guards anyway but yeah. they seem to have gone now yeah the ones we haven't been to are the kind of global buffets yeah um so the global buffets are the ones that like you know they have like six time, cuisines. Like they're ded- yeah. Yeah, yeah they're dedicated to like a region so you'll yeah. have like your Chinese, Asian food in one corner, your Indian, your general beige, which is my favourite section, the general sort of beige bland food, like fish fingers, yeah. chips, onion rings, yeah. that's in the middle. And then like pizza, lasagna, and then like a, if it's a good buffet, it's got like an amazing like pudding section. Yeah. And we haven't been to one of those before, and I don't actually know what the rules are there, to be honest. Yeah. I think they're back to normal now. But I do, there was a point, I did a Radio 5 interview where they were like, are buffets ever going to come back? And I was like, they kind of have to, but a lot of hotels, for example, are not, haven't brought back breakfast buffets yeah. properly yet. The yeah. two times I went away and stayed in a hotel in Belfast and Glasgow, both of them had different rules at the time. And you had to be behind like a barrier and you had to say to the person what you wanted. So you'd go oh, up. Right. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you'd be like, actually, I think there was a time, I can't remember which one it was, maybe it was Glasgow. I think I asked for like two sausages and she just gave me one. Yeah. And I had to just be like, okay. Whereas if it was me just picking up, so I would have had at least four. Um, yeah. So I felt like there's a lot of judgment. Yeah. buffets now because yeah, you yeah. need that thing. So hopefully that's gone away now. I'm hoping people who've been further away than I have um, will have experienced that. But it was a sort of worrying time for buffets. And my blog has been very quiet. So what happens is I go to these buffets, I have too much food, and then I'm too tired to write to anything. Write. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the, the blog isn't very much upkept. But um, yeah, I don't really know what's 
I kind of hoping they're okay. Like, yeah. as an industry. Because <laughs> it would be quite devastating if you kind of... It's the odd like, thing, right? Yeah, I feel like the Chinese buffets seem almost indestructible. Yeah. Not, and you know, in, in terms of, uh, yeah, f- uh, financially, so... And they're still kind of like the one we went to, like in your touristy areas. Yeah. Like it's still a relatively cheap way of getting a lot of food. Absolutely. Yeah. And Which surprisingly, surprisingly good as well. Because I think surprisingly that's... good. Yeah. The one, the, the one where I was like, we'll treat ourselves and we'll go to a fancier one. Um, yeah. That was really nice, actually. I've, um, I've, I've been to French service Thai places, and they've been absolutely awful. <laughs> <laughs> compared to um, uh, the the high adequacy of, of a lot of the Chinese buffets, I yeah. like to see that. Just basically goes here's a plate, off you go, give us money at the yeah. end. <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah, no, it's it's. I don't know. I kind of hope they're all right, but um, I can kind of yeah, see why a lot of people one found them disgusting in the first place, and two are like even more so. They're gross. Yeah. I'm not going to a buffet. But I do think, again, this is me showing my lack of class. <laughs> if you want a lot of food very cheaply, yeah. go to a buffet. Yeah, definitely. What was that guy that we uh, that had the, the, the shrimp? <laughs> the prawns, the, rather. The prawns yeah. man who, who yeah. came in. in like, I feel like he was wearing like bike, like he'd been cycling. Yeah. He had that sort of air of gear about him. And yeah, he just goes up and he just has like absolutely cross it felt like I'm amazed he didn't just take the whole hot plate it felt like it, yeah it felt like he'd be yeah it looked like he had yeah <laughs> and I felt like they knew him as well so basically yeah, this guy just had, turns up and his first course is just piled high like a pyramid of yeah. just like prawns that he had to unshell yeah he's not like yeah like already shell prawns he had to do them himself so he had genius he had a p- plain like empty plate and then his yeah. full plate of prawns and then he ate all of them very quickly and then just had like a load of like salady stuff I yeah think. yeah just no i think it was just like obviously carb free but yeah. like i feel like there's other cheaper ways to get that much protein and it it, it sort of feels as well like the pr- prawns are yeah yeah sort of high tier item at the buffet yes. as well so it was kind <laughs> it of like, like yeah if you're paying for a buffet like i always get like things that seem relatively fancy for a yeah. buffet especially you get the like we paid in the meat buffet, we paid for like the premium one, and they would yeah. come around, and they initially came around with some prawns, and we were like, yes, we want those prawns, and they were like, no, 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 you get the fast prawns. <laughs> we were allowed yeah. the jack prawns, so it was seen as like a premium item. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah, definitely. We've, we've landed. We've landed, say it. But uh, I don't know about you, but I like to wait until everybody else has left the plane before before I leave. <laughs> <laughs> there's always a bit of like taxiing as well isn't there that's the, like that's the most frustrating thing about when you're on a plane yeah. where you're like you've landed can i just get off now and it's like for various reasons you can't um yeah. and i'm always really because i'm quite short i'm always oh. really awkward so if i do put stuff above it's always really good for me <laughs> to get so i have to let people like leave because it will just be me trying to pull down a bag that's slightly too heavy for me yeah um, from the from the locker bit, comfort, I should just ask someone for help, but everyone's busy. It's a huge, it's it's a huge sort of minefield. I think getting off a plane. But yeah, yeah, yeah. And is it gonna have the nice? You go through the nice little tunnel bit, like, or do you have oh. to go downstairs? I, they, they both. I like going down the stairs if if I've gone from the UK to a hot country. Yes. Because that's the you first, want to know that you're here a, in yeah, different weather. Yeah. Yeah, because you've not really arrived until you've touched unconditioned air. Yes. That's I think that's the rule. I think that's a good rule, yeah. And it's not as glamorous if, like me, you went to Glasgow and Belfast and you're yeah. coming down yeah. some yeah. stairs. It's... The, the weirdest thing I ever ate uh, uh, in a, uh, an airport was a haggis burger, which doesn't sound oh. very strange, but the strangeness of it was it was cheap haggis and a cheap burger and it was oh. a- absolutely wonderful. <laughs> and so what was it? Just haggis in, in a burger shape? It wasn't with, like, beef? No, no, it was a beef burger in a oh, bun. Oh, a beef burger but with haggis. And top, topped with haggis, yeah. Oh, nice, yes, yeah. please. <laughs> and it was, uh, yeah, and it was it was kind of like, I ordered it, and I thought, oh, that'd be fun. And it's, you know, 
I, 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 I like to haggis it up if I'm in, in Scotland. <laughs> we, uh, we've started having it quite regularly. Initially, we would just do burn tonight. Oh, yeah. But we've started going, you know what? Haggis is not that expensive, and it's so much of it mm-hmm. that it yeah, ends up. Yeah. And it's not the healthiest thing, but actually, it's not the uh, unhealthiest thing either. To yeah. For that, a bit of mashed potato. Probably should have some veg. Some I did a weird mix of like cabbage and bacon with haggis and mash. So it's yeah. kind of Irish, Scottish yeah. mix food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but now I've never done that. I've never had anything as adventurous as a haggis burger. Like where the spoons have quite a decent. They really embrace like Burns Night and end of January. Yeah, yeah. But it's I mean, not, it's not even their culture. It's not their culture, yeah. And it's like, okay, you're doing something, but like nobody else really. There is a whole. I think there's a restaurant or pub in Edinburgh. Um, I only know this because I'm on some like Princess Diana stand group, and they had a Princess Diana themed haggis meal. But they do haggis like all year round, and it's like I need to get to Edinburgh and just go to that restaurant, even if I don't do anything else. I got, a, I got a, I got an oh. achievement there. Oh, for com- being compliant have- with a safe. I think I, oh. is that I, I put my phone into uh, air- airplane mode, and I don't think <laughs> I've ever done that whole- before. Yeah, you um, so. you didn't even get up to go to the toilet as well. I know. So. I was very good. I held it in. Held <laughs> it yeah. in. Long yeah. two hours. Sort of wish I'd get hold of the glass, but uh, <laughs> there we go. Uh, haggis can only be improved by having no meat. There is a vegetarian haggis, which I think I've had. I haven't, yeah, I keep meaning to try that, actually. Because the, um, the, the joy of it is, that obviously, the, all the stuff that makes a haggis a haggis isn't really the meat. It's the... It's the oaty bit, isn't it? It's the oats it's the and it's the it's yeah. the spices, yeah. So it, it, yeah. it's... It, it, ironically, because you're supposed to... It's supposed to be basically steamed in a, in a stomach. Um, that that's, that's how it's supposed to be good. Um, that it's, yeah, it's it's actually a, a chew-in, really, for, for vegetarian variation it's i mean it's the original it's one of the few things i mean it's getting better now saying i was out with a, a vegetarian earlier and i was saying actually the the options are now everywhere are like yeah. so much better and like particularly the meat substitutes of things i um i made a mental uh decision all my decisions are mental because that's i use my <laughs> i use my brain right? to yeah exactly um <laughs> but i made a decision earlier in my head to uh um, whenever I'm given, uh, you know, like you get the uh, eating, if, if you're at a corporate event or whatever, you, you get the thing around saying, what are your dietary requirements? I think I'm just going to go, I'm going to go dietary requirement vegetarian. So I'm, I'm going to continue to eat meat. But whenever I'm presented with a vegetarian choice, I think I'm going to go vegetarian. Are you going to do, this, you going to do some planes? Because I was wondering, because I read, so I'm going off to New York with my mum in May. Lovely. And they ask you kind of what you want, and I've heard like if you choose like the kosher, meat, it's nicer than the main. Oh menu. yes, I've heard similar rumours. I think. Um, yeah. I've had a look, and they did have a very nice looking like salmon salad thing. Yeah. That I was like, actually, fair. That does look good, but um, yeah, I think there is a way of choosing. But yeah, I've heard if you go, if you claim you have like dietary requirements, i.e., you're vegetarian or you're kosher or whatever, yeah, the um, the menu options are nicer. Because they've they've got they've got limited choice, so you end up getting quite a decent uh, yeah. Yeah. meal. Yeah, yeah. And there's the the other the other the point, which is um, to sort of bring the buffet in, really, is <laughs> that um, often if if it's like a business meeting or whatever, or a, a trading day or whatever, and they they just put everything out. It's like we need to work out numbers, but we're going to go to a catering and the caterers, and we're basically just going to have a buffet. So they're asking for people who want vegetarian to work out how much, how many vegetarian things. How much, to, are they gonna, how much veggie stuff are you going to eat? And they just get it wrong. They just <laughs> under, they under, um, and, do it. Yeah. Because meat eaters will eat vegetarian this stuff. Is it? We, we and they won't even like, process it as vegetarian. Yeah. It's just more food. We'll just be like, oh, it's not, it's a cheese sandwich or something. We're going to eat it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm always doing that. I don't, I never get asked. And they obviously think, oh, well, the, the meat eaters will have all the meat and fish. And it's like, yeah, I will. But I will have at least one sandwich from each section. Yeah. Plus, like, multiple crisps or, like, snacks and yeah, stuff. Yeah, That's the thing I miss yeah. about lockdown. I haven't been to a, like, catered to event. For such yes. a long time. I got some free cake at the quiz run through. That was like the closest I got to getting some free food recently. I almost it wasn't the, enough. The instant you said cake, I got hungry. 
That's I know. This is, I know. I'm gonna uh, have to. I'm gonna feel like I'm gonna have to have some sort of cake or something when I when I when we get off this flight. Yes. Um, yes. But if yeah, anybody it, will move, I've been slightly, <laughs> slightly obsessed by not in a sexy way, slightly obsessed with this woman here, who is. I feel um, like her outfit. Like, would you wear all white on a flight? Well, earlier on, she was just sort of sitting where the, there with her arms sort of floating in midair. <laughs> Like, yeah, this, is, this is what I do. This is a chance. This is how I fly. <laughs> yeah. You know, like um, in, uh, you know, uh, stories about hauntings where uh, there's like a, a building that used to be there, but it's not there anymore. And people see ghosts like going around where the second or first floors were. Have you heard of that? I have, yes. Yeah. yeah. I think we should be prepared for that. I think we should be prepared for becoming ghosts in destroyed buildings. And I think we should just basically go around in the sort of first and second floor and just to okay, just sort of look down and go ah, ah and just start just start <laughs> beating your arms uh, in desperation. Just in case, just in case ghosts yeah. are real. And I don't know. I think it will give somebody a laugh because you know you don't want to be scared, <laughs> you know, by a ghost. But I think you can, there's space to be entertained by a ghost. Yeah, exactly. Why? Why do ghosts have to be scary? They're surely just going around minding their own business. Mister Frightful was raised on Charlie Barley's Black Pud Island Boy. Ironic. When it was peak popularity, I couldn't eat it. They changed the recipe to keep up with demand. Oh. Uh, I yeah. We used to um. So we did not in the last couple of years, but we used to get square sausage with our haggis friends like me oh, as yes. well. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. And Iceland used to do, like, an acceptable lawn sausage thing. And then they stopped doing it, at least in the, uh, like... Sorry, lawn sausage. Mm-hmm. Lawn sausage, sorry. Lawn sausage is the alternative name for what I call square sausage. Okay. So it's square sausage. How are you spelling lawn? L-O-R-N-E. Oh, thank God for that. Yeah, so. Grass sausage. I was saying, uh, well, uh, to me, a lawn sausage is just code for um, a dog's production. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah I never yeah. thought of that before. It's absolutely not spelt like that. Okay, um, that's good, that's good. No, no, so this is like, swear. So, yeah, Iceland used to do it, and I'm still sad they don't do it anymore because it is the finest thing. So, my friend used to live up in, in Scotland, and that's when I used to get, like, they used to do the best sausages in general, and then yeah. the best square sausage and I yeah I really miss it my partner yeah. tried to make some of his own once and it was a bit too nutmeggy Jack, so. Jack Little's <laughs> boy is, do that again Jack Little's boy is suggesting that lawn sausage divides Saturday Night Live but I think he's I think he's confused <laughs> I think he's confused. exactly I should that's what I should have said I should have said like like SNL producer yes um, yeah but yeah so so I do I do appreciate that the, the when you have something really nice and they either change the recipe or in the case yeah. of my case, Purdy's. They get it they've wrecked Purdy's. Oh. Yeah, they've replaced, uh, your, your, for ages it was your silver Purdy's. And then they brought out silver and black Purdy's, which is fine. Silver was as ever, you know, and yeah. the black Purdy's was, um, it was, it was sort of like the, the red grape variety of, uh, of Purdy's. <laughs> And um, yeah, and then I don't know why, but they've suddenly turned around and said, "All right, well, we're gonna put guarana in it and make it way too sweet." Oh, got in three... a time when most things are not very sweet at the moment. Yeah, yeah, three different flavors, uh, two of which have stimulants in, and I, I just <laughs> try and try and avoid well, stimulation. Well, I mean, yeah, the best drinks do, but yeah, <laughs> they. Um... Yeah, there is a thing I get very attached and get very upset when things are not quite right. Like, Ribena, to me, isn't quite right. Yeah. Like, it's just not... It's worse, like, at least... I kind of admire Coke for being like, we're not getting rid of... You don't care about the sugar tax. <laughs> we're not getting yeah. rid of Coke. Yeah, yeah. We're not changing the recipe. Because there's, like, alternate. At least with Coke, there's alternatives. Like, there's Coke Zero, it's Diet Coke. Yeah. But Ribena, free Diet just, Coke. Yeah. It's just... Ribena's just bland now. Yeah. And yeah. I kind of hope that would be that would be my vote for a winner if anyone said we're getting rid of the sugar tax. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't care about my teeth. Yeah. I need things to I be sugary again. Yeah. I'm from the generation that lost all our milk teeth to OG Ribena. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. No, that was that, that was a thing, wasn't it? it was um, they put Ribena in um, baby yeah, bottles. 
bad, bad Ooh. idea. Bad idea. That is bad, though. That's yeah. like at least give their teeth a chance. Yeah. Let, let's adults ruin ours with very sugary Ribena. Yes. Um, it is our choice. It's just I haven't really. I'm not a big iron brew drinker. I've not really had it since the sugar tax. But I've heard rumors that it's not good either. Yeah. Yeah. So like, yeah, kind of, yeah. I just kind of think there is. Most people don't have a lot of joy in life. Like, let them have like some overly sweet, stimulating drink. Like, yeah. they'll be fine. Yeah. So we 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 draw near to the close of uh, of Jack's off on a plane with. Um, <laughs> Shanine, tell me what are your plans for uh, 2023, 2022? I'm a year ahead, and I don't know why. Well, I, I, I got into my head. What that my plans it... are for 2023? Uh, 2022, uh, quizzing wise, like I need to just be a bit more consistent. So that's like my aim. I'm not like, I'm not going to get great anything. I'm just going to try and be more consistent. Yeah. Um, get back into buffets again. Nice. Um, tr- try and sort of see more theatre, but I don't know if I really want to do that actually. Yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, as I said, I'm going to New York in May. So that'll be nice. It'll be nice to kind of yes. get away and actually that might hopefully feel like, life's getting back to normal but i think the main yeah. aim for a lot of us is that like feeling like life's normal again yeah. and that is still a bit of a struggle for me like i'm still like there's lots of friends i haven't seen in like literally years now and it's just getting to a point where it's like is it too late to be like should we catch up and it's just like finding the time and everyone else having the time so yeah and that's yeah. my my aim is to just try and catch up with those people i haven't seen for a very long time yeah. and um because yeah. I mean, this is the slightly odd thing about living in London is that you don't meet your fr- meet up with your friends anyway. You, you, the it's thing was, so you can difficult. go years, yeah, without yeah. seeing people. Like, not in a bad way. It's just you just didn't have the time. You just didn't see them. The social media meant you were always kind of aware of what was going on in their lives, and you didn't really want to see them yeah. kind of all the time. Yeah. Um, and now it's at a point where you go, oh, I kind of should, but like, would I have done this? Yeah. in normal times no maybe not <laughs> so I've... but yeah it's the nature of it is like there's some people you see like relatively like a lot and there's other people in your life that you kind of come across either at other yeah. people's things yeah. i think that's the big thing it's like for me i, I miss making acquaintances yes yeah yeah if, if, if sort of growing, real... growing the list doesn't sort of doesn't really yeah, you just don't have yeah. you don't have enough events and it's like i'm going to uh, like a friend's birthday party on Thursday and I'm like I think that's the first time like I've been to a few housewarmings and things but like that's the first I think major going out thing I've had since things have properly eased down and yeah. like I was like oh, oh god I'm gonna have to come across people the only thing we have in common is this person <laughs> that we know yeah. and that is again that's still like a shock to the system after taking a while to adjust to it before it feels like it's even harder now because you've just been so most people have just been so isolated either yeah. with amongst themselves or you know their family and stuff so yeah. yeah getting used to seeing people is is still a bit of a shock to the system and still a yeah. bit anxiety inducing sometimes but i'm hoping it's it's going to result in nicer things happening rather than feeling yeah awful. And I, th- I think that's that's the strange thing is that and uh, the positive thing is i think that everybody's everybody's out for, everybody's out for a good time everybody's out yeah, to, exactly. to basically enjoy themselves and 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 the, the, the everyone's baseline has shifted i think yeah absolutely and i think there is it's not like people i mean you are kind of if it feels a bit post dystopian and like you've survived something really major yeah and you can either take the approach of i'm gonna go all out or you can be like me and be like i'm just gonna tentatively go back to the yeah. things i was yeah. doing i'm not doing anything wild i'm not like having big aims i'm just gonna tentatively go back to the stuff i was doing before and Absolutely. see how that works out yeah. and hope for the best yeah because i think everyone everyone's comfort zones have shifted as well so yeah exactly yeah. you don't know what people's comfort zones are and before i remember like i saw some friends earlier and i was like are we hugging is that yeah. allowed yeah. because before you would still obviously ask permission and stuff but you'd now i'm like if someone's like absolutely don't touch me i'm like that's fine yeah. okay. whereas before okay. i'd be probably quite offended so yeah yeah but everyone, there's still people who are really locking down and still treating it as if it's really I, bad, and it is still really bad for a lot of people. I, I still, I still so do the socially distanced thing most of the time in the street, and I find I do it more so. The, basically, the fewer people there are, <laughs> and it's a, and it, which is totally counter logic, but um, it's like 
it's e- it's basically just easier to, to do it if there are fewer it's people. It's easier to distance when yeah. there's nobody around. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, I don't honestly don't think I'm going. To, I mean, I'm not going to big events anyway. But I would be very surprised if I caught COVID in like a crowd, you know, like a busy theatre, for example. My biggest thing, which is the one that I still need to do a lot, is I'm probably going to catch it in the same way I caught all my colds, which is like on public transport. Like yeah. those are the yeah. things. Or on the other end of the scale, the very intimate events where you sit very close to someone because you know them and you trust them. Yeah. That's where you're probably going to catch something. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, it's... yeah, it's it, that's the bit I think I'm trying to get used to. Kind of like, yeah. I know my limits, but I don't really know anyone else's. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, we 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 we're, we're doing something. We're getting out there. <laughs> Indeed. Slowly but surely. Uh, right. Well, thank you very much, Janine, for joining me on this on this flight. Enjoy Nova Scotia. Uh, thank you, and you. Yeah. What um, are you up to here? Um, here. Oh, I'm uh, getting some uh, stones measured for um, a charity drive for um, uh, guide seals for the deaf. Oh, that's, that's that's more nicer than my visiting friends. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's not. It's quite dull, but. Um, it, uh, because of strangeness in Canadian law, you're not allowed to send stones through the mail. Those so, Canadians. I know, I know. I blame Drake. Always blame Drake. Always blame or oh, the Jewish rapper. Would <laughs> you? Yeah. Okay. I think he's he's Jewish, isn't he? Anyway. I, oh, I don't. Um, well, this, I don't get asked that in quiz. What is religion? Is. It's oh, the opposite of the opposite of quizzing. Yeah. And this oh, is, yeah, um, I feel like that's probably like potential hate crime to be is, like, what yeah. is religion? There's this notion which I learned about through, um, oh, what's her name, from off of David Mitchell's wife. Um, oh, Vic- oh, the controversial Victoria Cara Mitchell. Victoria Cara yeah. Mitchell, yes, was um, this idea of people betting on facts. You should never bet on facts. <laughs> um, and the trick of it is you have a fact, e.g. Drake's Jewish, and... Um, you have to kind of bring it into a conversation in such a way that people instantly contest it. And you basically yeah. have to get to the, to the point where they are willing to bet on Drake not being He's Jewish. not being, okay. And then you whip out your Wikipedia. Exactly, yeah. Saying when it is bar mitzvah or whatever. And it's a very delicate balance. And my favourite fact, which is of no news to, I think, uh, friends of the stream, is that... Jaffa cakes, uh, the orangey bit in Jaffa cakes is mainly apricot pulp, and it doesn't have Jaffa oranges in it. No, oh well, goodness. And that's um, there's that one, and there's uh, oh, there's another one which is about the, which I got M curtains with, <laughs> which is the um, uh, first season of theme tune of Give Us a Clue happens to be the same as the Grange Grange Hill. Hill. Yeah. So when you hear Grange, the Grange Hill theme tune, you say, oh, is it this a theme to uh, give us a clue? <laughs> and you're not wrong. And then and I'm not wrong. what you're talking about. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Amazing. I need so, to find this. Yeah, I need to find more clues like that. Next time I come back on, I'll have a list. Brilliant. And I will share them brilliant. with you. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, again, th- thanks for flying with us. And uh, oh, yes, uh, I don't know when we're going to be... meet you on the flight. It's, uh, what are the chances? What, what are the chances, chances of us now seeing me on the same flight? Yeah. Me, you strange this arm lady. Woman. Yeah. You should have seen her drinking. Very odd. Very odd. <laughs> okay. And thank you all as well for, for joining us uh, tonight for Jack's Off on a Plane with. Uh, we will be back on Tuesday with some uh, we, we don't do a raid we don't do a raid when we do Jack's Off on a Plane because it's very difficult to find anybody else who is also doing a plane based chat show on Twitch <laughs> on Twitch at least you have to go to Mixer for that sort of thing and um, Mixer's dead um, so uh, yes we'll be back on Tuesday with some Elite Dangerous fun uh, until then thank you to M Curtains and Orange Spark for moderating thank you to Steve Kirby for making me the man I am today thank you Shanine for agreeing to come on relatively short notice and, Thank you uh, for inviting me. Uh, I, I, I was saying uh, I'm going to drag this out for as long as possible. Um, that it's a t- it's a two hour show and it's quite difficult to sort of think. Oh, am I going to am I going to be able to talk to somebody for two hours on anything? So, and and uh, with Shanine, I, I generally I thought is two hours going to be enough? <laughs> so uh, we could have carried on. We could have easily, absolutely carried easily, on. Yeah. 
but uh, yes, uh, back on Tuesday. Uh, but until then, I'd just like to say fly safe and I shall... Oh, that's reset. Well done. I shall see you in the black. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. Oh,